By your grace and mercy I was justified By your grace and mercy I was sanctified It was not because I was so qualified Hallelujah. You are excited to be here this morning. Can you shout a louder? Hallelujah. Shout it louder. Hallelujah. Will you lift up your hands? Let's appreciate God for the privilege to be gathered here this morning. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart and is caught with praise. Let's lift up our hands and our voices and begin to appreciate God and give him the glory. Let's give him the honor for the privilege to be here. This morning, let's appreciate him. Let's thank him for the privilege to be here. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We magnify you. We thank you for the privilege to be gathered in this place this morning again. To you be the glory. To you be the honor. To you be the adoration. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise. We give you glory. Lift up your voice and your hands and appreciate him for bringing you here today. Lord, we thank you. We are grateful to you. It is your doing. It is marvelous in our sight. We thank you, Father, for the grace to be here. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Be thou exalted. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Someone say a louder amen. God is said to encounter us on this mountain this morning. I'd like you to lift up your voice and say, Lord, I am grateful for what you are about to do in my life today. I thank you because I know I will not return back the same way I came. I thank you because I know you will encounter me on this mountain today. I thank you because I know the nine hours I am about to spend in your presence will be hours of impact, hours of exploit, hours of greatness. Hours of dimensions of shifts in levels. Lift up your voice and begin to thank God because you will not leave this place the same way you came. Mighty God, I give you the glory. I give you the honor because I know my life will never remain the same. I thank you because my destiny will change. I thank you because my destiny will transmogrify. I give you the praise. I give you the glory for what you are set to do in my life. I thank you for your blessing that is set to rest upon me. I thank you for the increase I am about to experience. I thank you for your favor that is about to come on me. I give you the praise. I give you the glory. I give you honor. Open your mouth and thank him because your life your family your destiny your business will not remain the same your ministry won't remain the same father i thank you because i will remain the same my life won't remain the same my business will remain the same my family will remain the same i give you the praise i give you the glory i give you the honor in jesus mighty name we have given thanks Someone say that amen again like a believer. The entrance of his word giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. Part of what we are going to be receiving today is a download of the word of God. Lord, as your word come, I receive light and I shift in level. Lift up your voice and make that your prayer. Father, as your servant stand to minister your word, I receive life. I receive light for a changing level in my life, in my destiny, in my family, in all my endeavors, in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask that your word will come for my lifting. I ask that your word will come for my shining. I ask that your word will come for my breakthrough. I ask that your word will come for my blessing. Lord, send your word my way. Send the word my way that will change my life. Thank you, Father. I give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Someone say that amen louder. God's servant 
is anointed for this service today. Father, re empower him, re equip him, re anoint him with fresh unction, with fresh grace, with fresh anointing for my life. As he stands to minister, may he minister to me directly. As he stands to minister, may he minister as your oracle. As he stands to minister, may my life change. Will you open your mouth and pray for God's servant? Lord, release fresh grace upon him, release fresh anointing upon him. Release fresh unction upon him. May he minister under divine unction like before. May he minister under divine grace in the name of Jesus. Release fresh grace upon him. Release fresh fire upon him for my life, for my destiny, for my family. As he speaks, Lord, let my life never remain the same. As he prophesies, as he declares, Lord, I receive everything that will be coming from his mouth from me today to the glory of your name and to the shame of the devil thank you mighty god because we know you have heard and answered in jesus mighty name we have prayed you believe god has heard your prayer will you celebrate him with a bigger hand of praise bigger and bigger and bigger will you give the lord a shout of hallelujah i know that you have testimonies of the goodness of God upon your life. God has been faithful to you in one way or the other. Ministers are already waiting at the glory entrance. Go and beat them and then your testimony will be harvested and then you'll be called to testify at the appropriate time. Will you give Jesus another big shout and a loud clap as we receive the praise team? Anybody excited to be in God's presence this morning? You can give him the shout louder, louder, louder. You can give him a clap of hand. Give him a leap of joy if you're excited. And if you know that you're going to have an encounter with the King of Kings this morning, you can make that shout better, better, better. Hallelujah. He reigns. Glory to Jesus. Somebody worship the King of Kings. Let worship flow within you unto Him. We are thrown, you have a Father. We are thrown, you King of Glory.
You were all together lovely Amara. You were all together worthy Hassan. All together, you were wonderful. You were wonderful. Wonderful to me. Here I am. Here I am. I'm here just to bow down. I'm here to say that you are. 
Hallelujah. Is someone excited to be here this morning before God? I want you to lift your voice before the Lord this morning and let us appreciate him again for this privilege to be here this morning. Lift your voice, let's appreciate him. Give him the praise. Give him the honor. Celebrate him. Magnify him. Ascribe all the glory to him. We thank you in advance for what you have already done, for what you are going to do. Bless his name this morning. Thank you and thank you. In the name of Jesus, we have given thanks. Hallelujah. Psalm 34 and in verse 3, the Bible says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. The Lord will hear you this morning. And deliver me from all my fears. The sight, they looked unto him and they were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. We have come here before the Lord this morning and you are going to cry before him. Father, I have come. Glorify yourself. Visit me today. Touch me today. Give me an encounter today. My eyes are on you. Lift your voice and speak to God right now. Father, give me a visitation. Give me an encounter this morning. I am asking, oh God, that you smile at me today. They looked unto him and they were not ashamed. Take away shame from me today. Lift your voice. Speak to God at this hour. Father, we ask that you give us visitation. Give us an encounter. Let it be all about you today. Let no man come here and return back the same way. Our eyes are on you. Our eyes are on you, Lord. Give me visitation. Give me an encounter. Smile at us today, Lord. Let your face shine upon us with your glory. In the name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 23 and in verse 18. The Bible says, surely, for surely there is an end. I don't know what you came here with. There is an end. And this morning, we are going to talk to God. Father, don't let my expectation be cut forth. Don't let it be cut short. Give me a testimony from here. Bring an end to every terminal disease. Every in the name of Jesus, lift your voice and speak to God this hour. Father, bring my expectation to an end this morning. In the name of Jesus, there is an end to every expectation. Bring my expectation to an end today. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and speak to God. Father, then let this case end today. Let disease end today. Let this principality end today. Let the gates be broken today. Bring my expectation of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands and appreciate him this morning for answer to prayer. Blessed be your name. Lift up your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Give him praise. Give him honor. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Adonai. The atmosphere of his presence is the atmosphere of healing. Is the atmosphere of restoration. Is the atmosphere of transformation. Is the atmosphere of breakthrough. In Exodus 33, 15. Exodus 33. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. Verse 16. And wherein shall he be known? Here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight. Is it not that in that thou goest with us, so shall we be separated. I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Oh Lord, we ask for your visible presence, palpable presence, tangible presence, in this meeting, in the name of Jesus, say, Father, we ask for your feelable presence. 
your palpable presence in our midst to the glory of your name. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and ask for his fillable presence. Let your presence saturate this arena. Let your presence make a difference in our life. We ask for your fillable presence. We ask for your palpable presence. We ask, oh Lord, for your presence in our midst. Let your presence be tangible. Let your presence be palpable. Let your presence be fillable. Let your presence be visible. Zako Lika Barosa Tia to deliver the oppressed, to set the captive free. We ask for your fillable presence. Your fillable presence. Your fillable presence. Your fillable presence. Papebu presence. Zako Lika Barosa Tia. La Freto Zaka Tira Masadia. Upon this mountain, your fillable presence. Oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, lift up your hands and appreciate God for hearing us. For this is the confidence that we have in Him that whenever we pray in line with His will, He heareth us. Give Him praise, give Him honor, celebrate the King of Kings. Go ahead and give Him a clap and a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah! And you may please take your seat in God's presence. We will be calling and following out very quickly for their testimonies. Sister Juliet Francis, step out to the altar. Brother Ose, Onabreka, Rhoda Ben, Engineer Akibon, Juliet Francis, Onabreka, and Ose, Rhoda Ben. Engineer Akibon, Mrs. Ifani Augustine, Mrs. Ifani Ikwe Augustine, Sarah Solomon Oroki, Warrior Precious, Warrior Precious, Mr. and Mrs. Basile. Mr. and Mrs. Basile. Janet David and Faith David. Give the Lord a praise as you come forward. Hallelujah. Juliet. Confirm your name and what God has done for you. Praise the Lord, church. My name is Sister Juliet Francis. I've been trusting God for a foot of womb from seven years now. Last month, July, Daddy declared and said, there is a woman, you are seeing your messes, but it's coming out black, and snake is running all over your, wa your waist, and the period is coming black, and the, swallow the snake is swallowing your children. I fall under anointing. Though I was not here, I was in my... The other branch at Nunyanya, Nunyanya too. So I fall under anointing. So the next day, I purge out, I don't know, white, white thing out of my body. The pain disappeared. And last week, on, sun, on Sunday this week, I saw, I, I saw my messes coming out normal, no black, and it was okay. But before then, daddy and mommy came in dream and so asked me, what did you want? God used the face of our servant asked me, what did you want? The first thing that comes to my mind is, I'm trusting God for the fruit of the womb. He said, take it. He just blessed me. I fall under anointing there too. So I come to give. Now the affliction is over. Give the Lord a big clap of friend. Oh, sir. Your name and what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord, church. Yeah, I want to give God all the glory for what he has done. Um, when this five weeks of um, supernatural shift in levels was announced, I knew it was my turn to be shifted. Um, after it was announced, I had an encounter. I saw myself in church. I was picking up um, slips for new converts. And then 
beneath those leaves were huge amounts of cash. Um, so as many as you pick, um, so the cash you get and uh, reward it. So as time went on, I engaged with the evangelism team. I came to church and I did all that was instructed. On um, three Sundays ago, I was led to sow a seed. I came to church, sow the seed. Before we close, Daddy prophesied. He said, if you have sown a seed and you are expecting a harvest, receive your harvest. So I claimed it. I went back home. The interview, I was sent a link from my friend, and I applied for an international um, job. So the interview was on Wednesday last week. Last week, healing and deliverance service, I came to church as well. Daddy prophesied, he said, there's a miracle with someone's name written on it. And I claimed it. On Wednesday, during the interview, I anointed my laptop, anointed my phones. I was playing um, Songs of Fire at the background, and you're always there to help. To cut the long story short, um, the interview was successful. And today, the Lord has shifted me five times my former um, level. <laughs> God gave him an international job where he will be paid in foreign currencies. Give the Lord a big clap of friend. Five times his former level. Anybody expecting a shift in level, shout the loudest, amen. Rhoda. Please confirm your name and let us know what God has done for you. Praise the Lord. I have come back to return all glory to God for terminating four years of childlessness. Praise God. A sister invited me to this place, but due to my work most times, I was not able to come. One day I came, I was so thrilled I felt God here. I said I will be coming. But due to work, most times I don't come. But what I normally do was, every Tuesday, I will come to the altar, there at area one, I will pray, and I will do my sacrifice, I will go. One day, as I came, I lay down on the altar, as if I was in a trance. I saw angels moving up, coming down, just like the story of Jacob in the Bible. The angel asked me, Rhoda, what do you want? I said, I want to give my testimony. I want one day to stand at this exotic altar to give my testimony just like others. Some years ago, I was watching through the YouTube. I read a testimony of eight years barrenness terminated. I said, God, if you can terminate eight years, what is four years? And lo and behold, God have answered me. We met mommy. After our three days dry fasting, I and my husband, mommy said, Rhoda, go. Your case is settled. September last year, I asked God for my birthday package. Lo and behold, God gave me a birthday package. I was confirmed pregnancy. Two weeks after the pregnancy, the stupid devil came. I had this pain at my left lower abdomen. It was, so, it was so painful. I was rushed to the hospital at that point. I said, God, there shall be no loss because I know your blessings make it rich and added no sorrow. All right. And despite the struggles of the enemy, she brought forth a baby bouncing boy. She's here today to give God praise. Before this baby came, she would take in and then the next thing is is miscarriage. She had three miscarriages until God truncated the agenda of the enemy and today she's here to give God praise. You are returning to testify as well in Jesus' name. Engineer Akibon. You will tell us your name and what God has done for you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Engineer Akibon. I am becoming a man of testimony in this church. Now, how many of us can remember him? He came from Calabar, where he had suffered for frequent urination, diabetes for how many years, sir? 
for one year plus. And then God healed him on this altar. And when God's servant prayed for him, ministered to him, he said to him, uh, the senior pastor prayed for me, and I, the, the urination stopped. And um, I am just barely three weeks old here in, as I'm here today. Several things have worked in my life. I left this place after the prayers that the senior pastor prayed for me, opened doors, went to somewhere in Otaku. There is a woman I know there, but I've not seen her for one year. My phone rang, and when I picked the phone, the, man, the woman said, Daddy, they want to give you a contract so that you would bless me. There is somebody I know who's, who works in NDDC. He says she should give a name of an engineer or a civil engineering contractor to him. He now gave me the man's number. I called the man. The man asked me some few questions. I answered. To my surprise, he sent me a letter awarding me a contract of 10 kilometers road worth nine digits. I don't want to mention the amount. That word, open door, open door, shifted his life. Congratulations, sir. Yes, congratulations. Congratulations. Open doors. Expecting nine digits, ten digits, eleven digits. Shout the loudest. Amen. You believe that today your life will change. Shout the loud most. Amen. Give him a shout of praise as you take your seat. Let's do those hands bigger and better for Jesus, the doer of all of these testimonies. Please, your name, your testimony, straight to the point. Hallelujah. My name is Mrs. Ifan Ibe Ugushime Chinyere. I have come today to return all the glory to God for what he has done in my life. Since I stepped into this mountain, I came here shattered, battered. There was a time in my life they were calling me barrister as though it was a nickname. Many did not know I studied it. And a time came, our daddy and our mommy here got concerned about my career. And that year, God settled me and gave me a job. On this mountain, I was delayed in, in marriage. I was a single for so long. I ran to our daddy here. He broke that yoke off my life. And I got married upon this altar. It was so severe that cobweb physically fell out of my face. And a yoke of never to be married was broken out of my life. Upon this altar, God gave me a husband, a man of God, a man that serves God, a man that loves God. Upon this mountain, God gave me children. Is that the best you can do for Jesus? You are right upon the same mountain and you're coming back with a catalog of your own testimonies in the name of Jesus. Straight to the point, madam, the recent one. And to crown it all, we wrote an, we wrote an exam, promotion exam last year, and there were threats of cancellation. I didn't want to take it for granted. I ran to mommy. I told mommy the download of what I was hearing, and mommy prayed. He, she declared, in fact, I got so worried, I, I, I had headache. I went to her mommy, see headache here. She laid hand upon my head. There was like a calmness entered my head. Since that day, that headache just disappeared. And just on the 5th of August, the promotion was released. On internet, the whole world started calling me, telling me that I was promoted to a directorate cadre. I never want to take that testimony for granted. I have come to tell Jesus, thank you for what you have begun to do in my life. Go ahead and give Jesus the praise. Promotion released on the internet. Not on local radio. Global internet. 
from everywhere she was being called and congratulated your own will go viral also in the name of jesus testimony straight to the point praise master jesus Carolina Jebo is my name. Here standing by me is my husband. We have come to return all the glory to this God that said my husband will not die prematurely. To him alone be all the glory. On the 3rd of July, last, that's last month, it, it was communion for escape and oil for preservation. On, that, on the dream of the night that very day, I was in a dream. Twelve people were appointed to die. Now, I appeared. Immediately I appeared. Ten disappeared mysteriously. Remaining two people. As I now stood in front of those two people, a word came. Death had been humiliated in victory. They fell down. I now woke up. I now called my husband. I said, look at this kind of dream I had. After explaining the dream, I said, death humiliated in victory. And my husband is sound. I am sound. There's no challenge. No. Um, as in that same day at the walk, the dream was just coming. And I was the beacon spirit of death. Without knowing that the devil was planning for my husband to die on that day. Because of that dream, I said I must be here for that communion of escape and preservation. I came for that day. The thing for that day was... I overcame them. That was the team. Now, when daddy was preaching, the preaching overwhelmed me. I was so, you know, the spirit entered me. I, I went home with three things that day. Daddy said, the battle came too late. One. Secondly, he said that the victory existed before the battle. Thirdly, he said, I am stronger than the battle. These are the three things I was going home with. Give Jesus the praise. A dunamite indeed. Hallelujah. On my way home, they called me. And I, a neighbor called me. She said I should start coming to Kubra General Hospital. I said, what happened? She caught the call. I now called again. She didn't pick. I called again. I was hearing my husband's voice shouting. I am dying. You know, I, want, I am dying. Now, what I did, I, I now said, thank God for this theme for today. I have overcome them, and I am stronger than the battle. So I said to the hospital, I went to general hospital. When the doctor now examined him, they said he has um, appendicitis, that it has busted and ruptured. The doctor now said that it's 50-50. Now, they managed to calm the pens at that night. They couldn't. The next day, they, they ran the test again. No, they carried out the scan. They said they cannot handle it. They now transferred us to my Tama General Hospital. When we got there, the doctor said that this thing is complicated, that they cannot handle it, that if we want them to handle it, they started speaking their grammar. But I told the doctor, I said, my case is different. I now remembered um, I'm tongue of fire and you are always there to help me. I own it while my husband was lying down in, in the emergency bed. The doctor now said, okay, that they will do it. They now put pipe in his throat, that as in a bag, another one in his stomach, another one in his private part, three bags just to flush out the, the fluid. Then the third day, they now took him to theater, and they took him to theater. After the theater, they brought him out. My husband was not responding to, you know, consciousness. They took him, after some time, they took him to the world. The nurses rejected him. That why would they bring somebody that is not responding to, to, to them? They return him back to the theater. Cut long story short, he was dead. And she started to play Tongues of Fire and started to play that song, You Are Always There to Help. And the power of God flooded that theater and the husband checked back to life. And here he is standing alive and well to the glory of God on the frequency of those two supernatural instruments that God has given to us in this house. In your family, there shall be no loss. 
Can somebody say a louder amen? amen? It is very, very good to be sensitive in the spirit. She saw a dream she never liked. Although there was victory, she ran to church, got the word that would tackle the battle. The word you have in the time of peace is what will fight your battles in the time of war. She was loaded with war. What the man had is probably fecal peritonitis. That is death. Instant death. <laughs> Mommy was saying, and they waited for three days. Death. Nurses say, don't push a dead body to us. You who did the surgery, take him back to the theater. Wake him up from there first before you bring him here. Push him back to the theater in the same condition. And he's truly always there to help. Everything that is dead in your life today is coming alive. Can that amen be louder? Everything dead in your life today is coming alive. Somebody shout the loudest amen. amen. Give him the praise as you take your seat. Your name, your testimony, ma'am, straight to the point. Praise the Lord! My name is Sarah Solomon Oroki. I'm here to return all the glory to God Almighty. Last two weeks and last week, I was lying lifelessness. We went to hospital, no avail. I don't know what the problem is. But to cut the sh story short, that faithful Saturday, I was lying on my bed, no single strength, headache, even to even use knife to cut loose all my hair. But to God be the glory. Devil is a bastard. My little baby, two years and he was playing with my phone. I don't know how he brought a daddy picture. He saw daddy picture and mommy picture on my phone. He was hitting me on my body. Say, mommy, daddy neshe, daddy neshe, mommy neshe, mommy neshe, mommy, daddy neshe praying, daddy neshe crying. He saw daddy, our father and the Lord, the senior pastor, was worshiping and weeping on that phone, two years old boy, and was tapping the mother, that the nature, that the nature crying, that the nature praying. And what happened? As he was doing that, he brought out uh, this song. With you, Lord, I can be naked, I'm not ashamed. With you, oh God, I can restore my strength because you are my great physician. As he brought that song, I, I turned. I saw this dress where I was ranging the dress. I said to myself, God, I want to wear this dress to come to church tomorrow. So I will be lying in this bed, left, lifelessness without going to church. I said, no. Immediately, I tapped my husband. Please download this song for me. And instantly, my husband did. As he did, I was playing the song. Inside me, as the song was singing, I was throwing up the song. I said, God, the doctors have done their own. The nurses have done their own. And you are my great physician. As your servant so, say, so shall it be. Immediately I said that, brethren, I saw a cloud from heaven pour over me. As that cloud was going from my head to the toe, immediately that, that cloud reached my toe. See, I, immediately I regained my total freedom. My sight, I cannot see where. And my sight, my eye opened. Everything, everything. I said, to everything, I restore my life back. I jumped up from the bed. I was shouting, calling my husband, treasure, something has happened. This song has hit me. See what God did to this boy. This song, and I, come, come and see the kind of joy. I was, immediately I stand up praising God. This boy.
joy was singing, was crying, said God. I, said, I return all the glory to you alone, God. Receive all the glory. Hallelujah. We have a great privilege from God to receive songs that are not just songs to entertain people, but songs that carry generational impact, life-changing power. This mo the other day, a man testified from worry. Remember how I think by 2 a.m. every night, he would have an attack. No solution. You are my great physician. Healed him. This morning before I came, someone sent this text. His name is Engineer Victor Protocol Department. He said, with you, Lord, healed my brother, booked for operation. My brother visited me on Sunday. I played a CD which was preached at 2019 Destiny Recovery Conference, where a brother testified of healing. That's right. That's the worry brother. Of also healing after listening to with you, Lord. That night, my brother had an encounter where a doctor operated his truth, and he woke up singing with you, Lord. And he was healed, and the operation was canceled. He was healed up of tonsillitis that was already booked for operation. My great physician answered and healed him. That was what happened to the woman. By the agency of a small child. Anybody ready today? While I, I read this, I just thought of a therapy. That maybe if physicians have failed, you may play such a song on auto reverse. And just lie and sleep. Let the great physician show up. In that climate, I have found a place where I can pour my heart. I have found a place where I can be myself. A place where I can have no secret to hide. A place where I am still safe after it all. I have found a place. I have found, found a place where I can pour my heart. I have found a place. I'm 
You will remain my great physician. your hands high everywhere you are. Give your hands high. And say after me, oh great physician, visit me today. Oh great physician, Do something new in my life today. Let your hands up. This one, you remain my great physician.
Thank you, great physician. Thank you, all oh great physician. Thank you, all oh great physician. Thank you, all oh great physician, for being here this morning. For being here this morning. Oh, great physician, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. Lift your hands high. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands high. Whisper that name, Jesus. Is everywhere. Power is everywhere. Healing is everywhere. Deliverance is everywhere. Miracle is everywhere. Signs are everywhere. Wonders are everywhere. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you, Master. Blessed be your name. Father, we love you. Father, we worship you. Father, we honor you. Be thou glorified. In Jesus' precious name. The atmosphere is very deep. I'm very heavy. Please don't let anybody distract you. Don't let anything distract you. Avoid all manner of movements up and down, especially of children. It's a very, very serious day. If you don't have any need to go out, don't go out aimlessly. And for everyone who came in here this morning, make up your mind to, to go home only after we have shared the grace. So that what God has in store for you today can be done. There is power everywhere. God wants to prove himself to the devil in your life that he is stronger to prove himself to the forces of darkness 
the forces of hell that is strong. Testimonies, miracles are already happening, but we'll attend to them in a short time to come. This is our sister Precious. She's 17 years old. She is friends with the daughter of our sister here, who is a member of our church. And for 17 years, Precious has been under a satanic attack. They thought it was um, convulsion that she was born with that condition. But as they kept going to the hospital, it got to the point a doctor told them, this is not a medical condition. It is a spiritual condition. So go seek spiritual help. And... Um, the parents of Precious approached our sister and requested that Precious be brought for his service. They took her in, catered for her as though she was their own biological daughter. Invited her here for the service one Wednesday. And what did God do? Praise the Lord. I brought her uh, last Tuesday on June. So we came... And we sat over that side. She fell under anointing when, when, when praises was going on. I didn't even know that she, that she, that she fell under anointing. It was later the usher brought her back to where we are sitting. So when, when we got home, I didn't see her again. So she came to my, my house the following week. I was asking her, what, uh, uh, why is it that she did not come again? She said that, that, the, that the sickness came back again. I did not even allow her to finish saying it. And I said, and that is the end in Jesus' name. She now said amen. So throughout that, uh, that week, the uh, month of July, I, we, we, could not, we could not come into healing and deliverance. So last week, I now asked her, uh, can we go out for testimony? She now said yes. So we, we are here last Tuesday, so we are not opportunity to testify. So today, I thank God that, that God has given us to come and testify for God delivering her from, from, the, from that shape. Because when something happens to her in the class, everybody will be scared from her. She will be... So people will, will, will not be going close to her. That, that is the way my daughter used to explain to me. And I told her that she should not be afraid, that it will not transfer to her. She should, she should allow her to, to be coming close to her. So I thank God that God has healed her and she's held her heart. And her mother has have, have been testifying that God has have, have, have used us to change her daughter, that now her daughter is okay. Praise the Lord. Now, when that attack comes, the young lady said she will be in an epileptic fit, jerking and vibrating all by herself, everybody around will run, and it happens severally in a week. And that has lasted for 17 years. But on this mountain, God arrested that devil. Since that last attack after the service, it has not recorded again. And she's here to return glory to God because that healing is permanent, that deliverance is permanent. And you are right here. You are not living with that condition also in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and give Jesus the praise. Satisfy the goodness of law in my life and my family. My name is Jenna David. The satisfy is for my daughter. Faith David. I've now, before here. she goes on, uh, the daughter is in the service and she's feeling um, uncomfortable to come out because of what the circumstances were before God intervened. But if you are here, Sister Faith, I encourage you to step forward so God can perfect what he has begun. God bless you. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Our Lord is good. Our mighty man in battle is good. The end shall die. The beginning of the end. When you trust on him, you will never go on shame. Devil wanted to, for me to be at shame, but God take away that shame away from me. 
You know, if you're on this mountain, the music mantle will come on your life. Hallelujah. It's okay. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Don't blame her. She alone knows what God did for her. Let's go straight to the point. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. A month of January 27. I will never forget that day for good, not for bad again. I was in my, in my bedroom. She went to church. We are going to live in faith church. She went to church. She called back and go and plant his head. She called back. There is no similar law of headache. Talkers of madness. In short, this girl go to fresh water. She not coming, mommy, I want to go and fresh water because never have bring water. I bring glass. I say, okay. A minute after, it was 8.30. This girl, now I was hearing prayer in the bathroom. In short, we was laughing at her that uh, God visit my daughter. A minute after, she now long back to the room. Mommy, mommy, mommy. I said, eh, I was water. He said, it was hard, very harsh to speak to me. That mommy... That my father brother, he now appeared. He was giving me madness. I said, I, I shock. I said, what is that? She now left back. Then the brothers, they follow her immediately. God do something that day. What we people are watching in the film, he put in my two eyes. He shot. God have his way. He went along. Somebody want to pick her. He refused. They immediately want to pull his shirt out. The brother now hold her. I, I now call the, the senior and say, what is Apple to face? Say, mommy, hmm. I don't understand. They should go and see how. I went as I was see her. They were dragging cloth with her. I call her. I hold her. I was shouting Jesus. She was telling me that mommy, they told this madness to the owner. He was, if I return it to the children of that my husband brother, he said, no. With her condition, he tell me, no, that the children, they are innocent. Return it back to the cedar. I will say, God, I return this madness back to the cedar. I will say that, I will say that. We sleep throughout of the day. Any church we went to, he will not allow the pastor to touch her. He will tell the pastor, you are not enough to touch me. The pastor said, first, sit down. He says, pastor, I will just respect you because you say you are a pastor. He will do like this. The pastor will fall. But the very day that Sister Hope is attended to the church, is in the service now, he invited me to the church. I said, I don't have money. They contribute money for me to come to the church. I take a drop. I just wake up. I said, first, I said, we are going to donate me. He said, yes, that is the church that I want to go. He now started off. By herself, she don't take back because I'm afraid. She do not mind. We come to the church, we sit. A minute after, she started hearty because I know that he wants God to touch him properly. Then we put our cup in his hand. Then now send us back to the cell. He was disturbed there. That did not say we should bring. They should bring that little young lady. He now speak. He pray for her. Immediately, he see that he say yes. This is the man that I want him to touch me. He bent down. He was cleaning his shoe. Daddy said, I will never forget that word. He said, Faith, what is your name? He said, Faith. He said, So far, you are cleaning my shoe. That is how, how God will clean all your dirtiness away from you. And I say, Amen. That is the end of it. Look at me. The devil wants you to be ashamed. God said no. <laughs> she said that is the end of it. Look at my daughter. I, I didn't know who she was. I saw her cleaning my shoe here. And I said, as you are cleaning my shoe here, that is how every debt in your life is cleaned out. That was it. Madness returned back to sender. Have you ever 
ever seen a situation where a mad girl stretched his hand on the person who is meant to pray for her, the person fell under the anointing. Hey. Fell under the devil, not under the anointing. <laughs> fell under the devil. <laughs> you say, you pastor, you can't deliver me. You can't deliver me. She came here and went on her knees by herself. Do you remember the madman of Gadara? He met Jesus and prostrated on the spot. I have experienced this about four or five times. Power, the past power. Faith. You are blessed. Thank you, Jesus. People, I speak to everyone here today. Every arrow fired into your life. Look at that young, fine-looking girl. Had to be chained with handcuffs because of insanity. But that devil has returned back to sender. Every arrow of insanity, arrow of disaster, arrow of destruction, arrow of calamity, of catastrophe fired in your direction today this arrow is returned back to hell every devil that says you should not enjoy your children every devil that says you should not enjoy your children that devil is sentenced to destruction today Anybody saying amen, say it like a believer. You are saying amen, say it like a believer. Mother of faith, congratulations. Congratulations. Stand up, it is well with you. You will never have this kind of challenge another time. And if madness is good, the uncle, whoever gave her this madness, from this hour, it is returned back to that devil. Stand up on your feet. Are you in town here? Wamba. But where are you people from? People hear me. There was a woman here that the child that came brought a daughter also mad. Daughter was doing youth service. She had only two children. The boy was killed. Then the, the girl was made mad. And God also healed her of that madness. Is the woman here again? And the daughter? That is how wicked the devil is. Killed the only son and made the only daughter mad. That's how wicked the devil is. Every manifestation of, the, of satanic wickedness, every manifestation of the wickedness of the devil in your life, today, that arrow of wickedness is retrieved and refired back to hell. Every manifestation of the wickedness of the devil in your life today is retrieved and refired back to hell. I say it again, every manifestation of the wickedness of the devil is retrieved and refired back to hell. <laughs> Lift your hands and say, after me say in the name of Jesus, every arrow of evil looking for me, today is your end. Oh, you evil arrow, I retreat you and return you back to sender. Evil arrow on your mask. Get set. Shout back to sender. Back 
to sender. Back to sender. Arrow of madness. Arrow of destruction. Arrow of disaster. Arrow of catastrophe. Back to sender. Back to sender. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to celebrate for seven minutes. Celebrating the return of arrows to Zender. Those of you watching now, if you are within the distance where you can be here, be on the run now. Yesterday, I, I was telling a woman whose husband was sick, paralyzed. I said, well, I know that you may not be able to come because of the condition of your husband, but you people should ensure you watch on television. She said, it's the same. She said, is it the same? That she will be coming. That she will be coming. <laughs> he said, it's the same, not the same. <laughs> he said, it's not the same. I have to come. Now, that is without prejudice to those of us gathered in various locations, our satellite churches and harvest centers and locations. In that case, we are gathered together as a fellowship and where two or three are there, God is there. That is different. But sitting just by your own, because in our branches, if the dance start, there is, the climate is the same there, where the churches are. But where you are, or just on your own like that, be on the run now. We are here till 6 p.m. So give yourself another 30 minutes and, and run here. Give yourself another 30 minutes and run here. You hear me? You they hear me? Bring the camera, make them see my eye. Be on your way now. Run down. And you are and you are preserving your coming in Jesus' precious name. Shake the hands of seven people. Tell them I want to celebrate. The arrow back to sender. I want to celebrate the arrow back to sender. I want to celebrate the arrow back to sender. Let's go. Oh, the man will praise the Lord. Oh, the man praise the Lord. For his goodness and for his wonderful work. To the children of men, to the children of men. He has broken the gate of brass. And caused a pass of fire as he has. Oh, the man will praise Yeah. 
another clap and a shout of praise and please you may be seated hallelujah hey 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 hallelujah father we give you praise we worship your majesty ancient of days we magnify your name we say to you be all the glory all the honor all the praise all the adoration be thou exalted lord in jesus name we have worshiped somebody give jesus another clap and a shout of praise <laughs> hallelujah I'd like to welcome you to this nine hours in god's presence are you excited to be here today hallelujah without a doubt every time you do something that is not usual God would always respond with an answer that is not usual. So whatever it is that you've been trusting God for, whatever it is that you wish to encounter, maybe you want to know more of God, maybe you want to know more of Him, you want to feel more of Him, maybe there's a healing you desire in your body, maybe there's a transformation you want, maybe there is a miracle you are trusting God for. I'd like you to know that as we've come here to do what is not commonly available, what is not usual, nine hours in God's presence, the whole daytime period of the day today, as it were, from nine in the morning till six in the evening, by the time we're leaving, it will be getting dark. God will give you light that will overthrow every darkness of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I see you living here with your testimonies, with your signs, and with your wonders in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Very quickly, um, taking us further in this service this morning, I'll be reading the seeds of destiny and sharing with you what the senior pastor has written in today's write-up. We're looking at the password to God and his kingdom. Many of us are used to all manner of passwords. You have passwords for your bank accounts, you have passwords for your online banking, you have passwords for your um, social media handles, you have passwords for your uh, email accounts and all manner. But there is a password to the kingdom of God and one of that is very important is being like a child in uh, previous write-ups in the seas of destiny the senior pastor had talked to had already talked to us about the openness of a child let me just read this i think it will be faster if i read um uh, anchor scripture today is matthew chapter 18 and verse 1 and it says and and said verily i say unto you except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. We understand that humility is a major mark of childhood. Childhood um, is a world of innocence and openness. It is a world of great delight. Uh, it's a world of beauty and excitement. Such a captivating world that captures the very nature and the ambience of the kingdom of God. Children exist in a realm of their own. You see a child dancing and celebrating God. There's this little boy that was around in the house yesterday and all by himself. He did praise, he did worship, he led himself in a whole prayer session all by himself and all the adults were doing every other thing he prayed he danced by himself all by himself and then started praying and god in the name of jesus bless daddy and nature bless mommy and nature do, 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 do. all by himself it was at the point he was praying this was maybe like almost an hour i turned and i told the people around i said this boy has finished praise finished worship and he's praying and god has heard him and answered him he existed in a world all by himself. That is how children are. So no wonder the master admonishes us 
to become like little children in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. What are the points that we want to look at today? We're looking at three major points, characteristics of a little child that we should embrace. As we go through them, I'd like you to be praying in your heart and asking God, please help me. Let me become more like a child in my heart. The first thing is a child has no enemy. A child has no capacity to make enemies or live in bitterness. If you offend a child now, he will return and play with you within another moment. A child has no capacity for the complication of bitterness. A child has no unforgiveness and offense. When people have the complication of bitterness, unforgiveness, and offense, they, it denies them of access to God and to his kingdom. See some little children there in the screen. Number two, a child has nothing to worry about. A child lives in a realm of anxiety freedom. They are totally free of anxiety. His life and his future are literally in the hands of God. There's nothing he's worried about. Whatever it is, he knows he will eat. Whatever it is, he knows he's safe. A child has no anxiety. Number three, a child has no doubt. He can believe anything that you tell him. If you tell him that the Bible says anything, the child believes it hook, line, and sinker. A child believes everything absolutely. That is the, the reason why you hear children saying things like, my daddy said he will buy me an aeroplane. And he believes it. He doesn't have any limitation. A child believe that it is possible even when the father is not financially buoyant beloved as a child of god you need to believe god's promises and also believe his judgments the reality of heaven and hell should be real to you because it is and then you let god take the role in your life do not Hear one thing in church and do the opposite when you get back home. You must come to a point where the word of God for you is not negotiable. Number four, a child cannot walk in pride. A child walks in humility. Humility is a major mark of childhood. A child does not have any personality to defend. He doesn't care what you think about him per time. Beloved, if you need to make heaven, you need to purge yourself of that monster called pride. And every single day of your life, take it out and have a place with God in order to have a place with God. And I know that the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember this, if your presence, uh -uh. remember this, that humility is a major mark of childhood. Let's pray together. Before we pray, I'd like to give the opportunity to somebody who wants to say, I want to be more childlike. There's so much sin that has ravaged my life, ravaged my body, ravaged my mind. Pride bitterness, arrogance, ostentation, doubts, and unbelief, and you want to say, Pastor, pray for me. Wave your hand wherever you are. We'll be giving you papers, slips of papers. The counselors will give you slips of papers, and then the senior pastor will be praying for you at a later time. I see your hand up. Pastor, pray for me. I want to be born again. I want God to wash away my sins. I see all your hands. Usher, um, counselors, please, can you see them all over? Just keep on waving. Keep on waving. They will give you the... Okay, stand up on your feet so as to make it easier for the counselors to get to you. And then you fill those forms. Later, towards the end of the service, the senior pastor will be praying for you. And I believe that God will be giving you a drastic turnaround in your life and in your destiny. Keep waving the hand. Waving the hand. Pastor, pray for me. I don't want to 
to die and go to hell. I want to believe the reality of heaven and hell. I want to make a way, do away with bitterness. I want to do away with offense. I want to do away with pride. I want to do away with the things that keep me away from you. I want to do away with anything that makes me fall short of your glory. Oh God, I ask for your mercy. Cancel us. We need people over on this side. I, 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 you are asking God, Father, please help me. I want to live a life that pleases you. I want to live a life that glorifies you. I want the enemy to be put to shame. Stand up on your feet, those of you waving your hands, and pray this prayer after me. I mean it from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins. I come to you today. Please forgive me all my sins. Make me a new person. Wash away my sins. Live in me. Help me to live like a child trusting in you, believing in you, free from bitterness, free from unforgiveness, free from pride, free from arrogance. Oh Lord, I thank you for washing away my sins and make me a new person today. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Counselors, have you gotten to everybody? If you haven't gotten a paper, just wave your hand some more. Give Jesus a big clap of hand. Give Jesus a big clap of hand. Hallelujah. We proceed right away this morning. We're going to be receiving the ministry of Dunami's voice. They'll be taking us further into the rest of the service as we bask in this presence of God and bask in this arena of his glory and of his beauty. They are singing a beautiful celestial song that has been received and written by God's servant, the senior pastor. That song was sung for the first time on Sunday morning, and we're excited that they are going to be singing it again in this Tuesday healing and deliverance service. How many of you are excited for what God is doing in our midst? Hallelujah. The song is titled, Lord, I Bow. Lord, I Bow. Let's receive Dunami's voice as the minister that song this morning.
Put your hands everywhere you are.
Lift up your hands and worship him. I worship the King of the throne. Up your hands, everybody. If 
if you can be upstanding, etc., in a worship position. Lift your hands everywhere you are. We did not come here to play. We did not come here to be entertained. We came here to experience God. And we must experience God. Lift your hands. Worship it, worship it.
Lift up your hands where you are. Worship him now and just tell him, Lord, lay your hands on me this morning. I am ready for your hands this morning. Lay your hands on me this morning. Touch me this morning. Lay something on me this morning. Touch me this morning. Lay your hands on me today. Change my life today. Change my story today. I am available for a touch. A touch of your hands. A touch of your power. Lift your hands high. That's right. That's right. We are here for the move of God. We are here for the power of God. We are here for the wonder working presence of God. That's right. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift those hands higher. That's right. No. 
Thank you, Master. In the name of Jesus. Angels are everywhere here. The master himself is here. Chains are already broken. Chains are breaking and some are already broken. His power, his presence is here. His healing is here. Miracle is here. Time for divine encounter. Lift your hands up. In the name of Jesus. 
and maintain quietness everywhere. If all we did for nine hours is to worship him, it was not a waste of time. For these people have I formed for myself, he said. They shall show forth my praise. Say the 24 elders and the cherubims, they cease not day and night to say holy, 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 forever and ever. If all we did for nine hours was to worship him, we didn't waste time. Lift your hands. Very much hard. Yes, 
Jesus name. Keep the hands high. Maintain quietness everywhere. Behave as if you are in one room. Only you and Jesus. And he's trying to talk to you. He's giving you an encounter. With his eyes as flames of fire. With his feet like a bond with brass. With his hair as white as wool. With his face as bright as the sun. With a sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Alpha, the Omega. The beginning and the ending, the first and the last. Right here. Let me have Maintain quietness everywhere. You are standing inside the glory now, and that glory is about to perfuse your body. Lift your hands high. Get set for an encounter, a divine visitation, a chain breaking encounter, breakthrough encounter, people pulled out of the pit encounter, people pulled out of the grave encounter, altars destroyed encounter, celestial encounters. Open heaven encounters. Third heaven visitation encounters. Lift your hands high now. Father, let it be. Quiet. Lift your hands. At the count of seven, you will place a hand on your head and scream the fire at the top of your voice. Scream the glory at the top of your voice. Father, let your glory give someone an encounter now. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Start again. Lift your hands up. Out of seven, get set for an encounter. That's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven.
your hands and give him the praise. Something is happening. All over this place, the spirit is moving. All over this place, as the prophet said he should be. All over this place, there is a mighty revelation. As the waters are shut to come. There are angelic visitations, angelic visitations that pulled clothes out of people's bodies, delivered people, diverse encounters. Everyone in such a category. Quickly step forward and let's hear what just happened to you. Take your seat, the rest of us. You had an encounter just now, a deliverance encounter. An angelic encounter, a garment pulling encounter, removal from the beat kind of encounter. Quickly, let's find out what happened. Those who are coming where they live on their seat, those who are seated there, watch their things for them. All the prophets. Said it should be all over this place. There is a mighty, mighty, mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. While we are here, we are connected all around the world. I just saw the Lagos Church now. All the other locations, ensure you send your signal. Makodi Church, Enugu, Kaduna, Jaws, all over the country, ensure that your people see themselves right here. And send out the testimonies as they happen there. And the ICT, ensure that you get as many locations, Port Harcourt, and several of the locations across the country, connected different from outside. Somebody is getting set to receive something, say amen. The spirit is moving all over this place. Said it should be all over this place. There is a mighty, mighty revelation. All the glory of That's right. Miracle happening everywhere. One thing about God is that He does not know time, He does it anytime. Somebody who was not walking is walking. by force, paralyzed walking by force, walking by force, the violent ticketed and we are just starting, we are just starting, we are just starting, the violent ticketed by force.
And you deserve the glory And the honor As we lift us in worship As we and couldn't walk again and this is a miracle happening they said they came from the hospital straight they are showing us how she came two people holding her one on one side the other on the other side and yet she couldn't walk father thank you because this paralysis returns back to hell person wanting to walk you can walk right now actually you can lift up your crutch and lift up your cane and begin to walk where you couldn't walk lift up your crutch another one walking here another one walking here are you just looking like that another one walking here with crutch is lifted are you just looking like that lift up your crutch lift up your cane you couldn't up and down, up and down. Miracles happening everywhere. Miracles happening everywhere. Let us celebrate. Give a celebration song.
came here with a child that had lost the son. Come. And then they made the daughter mad. How are you? You are totally free. Amen. This girl was doing you service and this. Going to camp on 20th of oh, she was meant to go to camp and they struck her with insanity after losing the son already. Only daughter. Congratulations. Okay. The whole thing is gone. She said just that I am feeling headache sometimes. The headache is gone too. Return back to hell. Ah! Jesus. Jesus precious name. If you are getting ready to receive something restored back to your life, you will dance like you have never done before. <laughs> don't cry again. Mama, what will you say to God? Really, I don't know how to say. Thank you, God. I'm really happy. I'm really happy. Because if you say I know, the one where I die, I will come and call you. If I say I know the one where I die, I will come and call you. It is well. No problem. No problem. God will restore everything that the enemy took from you. In Jesus' name.
to rest. Must be laid to rest. The, the woman said, Mama is lifting up her crutch. Lift all of you, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Yeah. 
Take your seat one minute. There is fire everywhere. And miracles are still happening everywhere. What happened to you, man? Sir, this is Mrs. Ihani. She said in 2011, she had the pelvic bone broken and she had hip replacement. Rain is falling. Then, that rain is good for us. Let it cool the atmosphere. Somebody say amen. Before you leave here, the reign of God's presence will saturate your life, saturate your body, saturate your system, saturate. And for those still at home, I'm asking you, what are you waiting for? Run, 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 run. All roads lead to the Glory Dome, Airport Road, Abuja, all our locations across the country. God is walking here right now. Those of you outside, run inside. Don't hang around. Settle. Those of you standing, you are standing so you can see. They, they can, you can see the screen. See the screen. Yes, what happened? Sir, she had a hip bone replacement just a moment 2011 the hip, hip bone replacement 2011 yes sir and she said after then she began to have severe pain of both legs was not able to walk properly cannot stand this long but as she came this morning and you prayed she said power came upon her the pains are gone she walked all the way and now without the use of this walker she's able to walk hip bone replacement Mother, show us how were you walking when you came? How did you walk with this when you came? You can walk by this side. Mama was struggling to walk. She's showing you how she came. Struggling, struggling to lift the leg. But Mama, bring now. Walk on. Walk on. Mama, step here. Walk on, walk on, walk on, Mama, walk on. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Ma Mama, let me pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, perfect this miracle. Of the Holy Ghost be healed in Jesus' name. This becomes your souvenir on your shoulder. Hallelujah. Yes. Sir, this is Mrs. Gladys. She said 2017 she was in her house according to her. Yes, please. 2017 please. she was in her house. According to her word, she said a strange personality lifted her up and hit her on the ground. Are you people hearing? This woman was in her house. Which year? 2017. Two years Two ago. Two years ago. A strange demonic personality lifted her up, landed her on the ground. And she fractured her femur bone on the left leg. The right Fra leg. Fractured the left femur. The right femur. Oh, the right femur. Yes, sir. She was on wheelchair for two years. But while she came today, she came with this walker. She couldn't walk without this aid. And according to her, she said in the course of the service, she, she has been lying down. By the shout of glory, she stood up and started walking wow. without the walker. Walk, walk with the stick, let's see. How were you walking with it when you came? 
They, they said the camera picked her when she was coming. With excruciating pains. With excruciating pains. And when the glory was shouted, you stood up. They are looking at you. Walk the way you stood. No, walk normal now. Are you looking? Hey, hey. Come up, come up, come up, come up, come up. I like this one. Hey, hey. now she said she was walking like this with pains now she's telling me she wants to dance okay hey. souvenir now power in Jesus name give the Lord a praise take your seat one minute sir this is sister Maureen that's Dunami so you're there we are seeing you God bless you sister Maureen she came into the service with her elder sister she said 2014 she was involved in the Gasly motor accident that fractured the left femur. She couldn't walk without the aid of this stick. Came into the service and the shout of glory, the power of God shot through the moon. And right now she can jump, she can walk. Oh, you are jumping? Yes, sir. Come, come, come. Come with your sister. Come with your sister. Come with the stick. Hallelujah. How did you walk when you came? Show it. Yes. Show us how you were, you were coming. And the, the accident was since when? It's 2014. 2014. Yes. For five years, you have still been wearing, using this. And now you say you can jump. Why? Do it again. Jesus! Are you just looking like that?
congratulations. Why are you shaking your head? I'm surprised because we went back to Enugu to find out funeral. I think you'll adjust the sound so that they can hear us a bit. Wait. So I told her you should follow me to Abuja yesterday. She agreed. So immediately she accepted that she would follow me to Abuja. We came back yesterday. This early morning, she woke me up and said, are we not going again? I said, don't worry, we are going. At the end of the day, she was here. In fact, I was very, in fact, I'm surprised. Somebody give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords a shout of praise. You believe your miracle is coming. Your testimony is coming. Give him a bigger shout of praise. Congratulations. Affliction will never rise up another time. Father, let the leg be colized with the other leg. Power of the Holy Ghost, help her. The name of Jesus, you are whole. Put the stick on your shoulder and return back to your seat. Give the Lord the praise. Salem, I will take the two of them together. Mama here came with her daughter all the way from Oshun State. She had an accident in the month of March. And since then, she, she broke her leg, couldn't walk since then, assisted by this walking stick. She crutches. came today. This is crutches, not walking stick. Crutches, sorry. The crutches. So at the shout of that glory, power surged into her body. And she began to walk for the first time. She couldn't walk like this. She's standing here. She couldn't do it for a long time. Now she's standing and she trusts God that God has performed her miracle. Just one moment. We'll have to take it one by one. Mother, show us how you came with the crutch. For how long have you walked like this? Three months. Three. Month of March. Since the month of March. Yes. That's your mother. And you came from where? From Oshun State. From Oshun State. Yes. It's, it's uh, no stamp. Can't. The it's, it's canceled. God who healed you will heal the husband. Walk on the lesson. And this was how she came. And you decided to come for the service here this morning. Yes, yes. Mama, bring the crutch now. Give the Lord the praise. It may be slow, but it is sure. Lift your hand, man. That's the leg there where it is broken. Lift up your hands. Father, perfect this miracle. Power of the Holy Ghost. Pray for you and pray for your husband and pray for the fruit of the womb. Go! Bring forth. Bring forth. In Jesus' name, it is done. Our sister here. Our sister here, Alaye, she said that she was operated upon a fibroid since the month of April. She lost the pregnancy and since then she developed complications. Couldn't walk well. She walks like this, bent, with severe pain around her abdomen. She said to death, to her surprise, she could stand up upright. She walked from the back right to the front How for the first time. Here? How she was you? invited here by a brother in this church who saw her condition and had pity on her and she came. How did you walk when you came? Somebody was holding her on one side and she was bent like this. Since when? Surgery. 
This is three weeks now. Where they do surgery. And how you show us again how you are walking. How you are walking. And that the tummy was very big. Now show us how you can walk now. Somebody give the king the praise. Lift up your hands. Heal. Jesus name. Sir, this is uh, brother Moses. He had accident October 2018 and broke this left hand. And since then, he said he went to different places, even went to native doctors until the in-law invited him to Abuja yesterday. When he arrived to Abuja, when he arrived to Abuja, the oil blessed from this altar with the in-law. He applied it and God started to do work. When he got to service today at the shout of glory, the hand he couldn't lift since October last year, he lifted he it. He couldn't up. lift it since he October. Lift it. Now, can you lift, lift it? Lift it, let's see. I move the finger, let's see. His fingers now. He couldn't do that since no, no, last. No, no. Down. Up. Down. Are you sitting and looking like that? It's a miracle walking God. He's a miracle walking God. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's a miracle walking God. Everybody sees. He's a miracle walking God. He's a miracle walking God. Take it up, up, up. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's a miracle walking God. Everybody sees. He's a miracle walking God. He's a miracle walking God. And when Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. Nobody, nobody can say no. When he says yes, nobody can say no. He says yes, nobody can say no. When he says yes, nobody can say no. Nobody can say no. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. Nobody can say no. Nobody can say no. Anybody expecting a testimony today say amen. You are expecting your own testimony today say amen. Look at your neighbor say get set. We are just starting. Take your seat. Congratulations sir. Miracle is permanent. In Jesus name. Uh, bro James here about a year ago started complaining of joint pains, pains in his joint. I asked them, is he an SS patient? They said no. He was never an Asian SS patient. When they took him to the hospital, they ran an x-ray for him and the doctor uh, um, suggested that they needed to do a knee, um, hip replacement for him. A hip replacement. Here is the x-ray that confirmed that then he needed to be replaced. Yes, go ahead. They came in that condition with excruciating pain on the hip there. He walks bending to the side. He couldn't walk straight, could not bend, could not walk all by himself except being aided by the sisters. They brought him here in that condition and while the ministration was on, power surged into him. The pain is gone. The pain on the hip is gone. Now he could walk, bend. The things he couldn't do before, he can now do them. He walked, bent. Come up, young man. Mighty God. The mother can follow him. Or the auntie. You said he walked like how? Before you brought him. Yes, sir. When he was, the, any time the boy was in pain, they used to inject him before the pain would reduce. 
when you when we came, the boy was crying, pain, pain. I was rushed to a clinic there. I didn't see them. I said, God, how are you? I'm, I'm not going to be comfortable with this service today. I said, when we came back, I said, service was about to start. Now let's go. With God, all things are possible. Since we are here, we're not going to inject you today again. So when we, the service was going on, the boy told me that he was okay. He didn't feel any pain again. So I we took him. I said, let God come to give. Thanks wow. So you, 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 you walk like that. Be totally bent to one side. Wow. Walk, walk, walk straight now. Are you seeing him? The miracle has begun. Totally bent to one side. But now the Lord is straightening him up. Give the Lord a praise. Can you do what you couldn't do before? With the kind of hip condition they are talking about, there is no way he can bend. He could have bent like that. Father, you will do this hip replacement surgery for this young man. Thank you because it is done. In Jesus' precious name. Let's celebrate. Only you can do what no man can do, Jehovah. Only you can do what no man can do, Jehovah. Only you realized that I just mentioned that we should thank God for this place that if sun comes we are not moved if rain falls no challenge then God decided to confirm it immediately are you just sitting and looking like that stand up and let's, let's celebrate God let's celebrate God let's celebrate God Let's celebrate God. Wait, wait. Is it, everyone remains standing. Is it possible to be at the old parade ground now? Will it take one third of these people here? Is it possible to be at the Eagle Square now? Under the rain? Even at the National Stadium? Even at the Lagos Stadium? Which kind of place can you be now that the rain will not bother you? Which kind of stadium can you be now that rain will not touch you? The glory dome. <laughs> can we celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Listen, as we dance this dance now, any other thing you are trusting God for here shall be done for you. Dance it one minute. Dance it one minute. Everybody look and see what the Lord has done for me.
giving you a testimony now. Amen. What happened? Since them bringing somebody. What? He was born deaf and dumb. Right in the service, he started hearing with the right ear. I tested him and he responded. He was born deaf and dumb. Incredible. All right. Oh, hang on, hang on. Too many things are happening here today. How many of you believe your own miracle must happen today? Please take your seat. One minute. Daddy, our brother here, imagine, came to the service limping. He came to the service limping on the first day of June. He said he woke up and saw marks like a razor on his left leg with excruciating pain, went to hospital in that condition and was diagnosed. And the they asked him that he should come the next day. But the next day, the issue expanded and now has been booked for surgery. He said the leg is to be amputated. It is in that condition that he came to service today. And he said all of a sudden when he shouted glory, he discovered that the pain completely gone. The leg that he came limping, he could now use the leg and he came to turn all the praise to God. Did you, did you hear that? That man woke up. That man woke up and had razor marks. On his left leg. And then it degenerated. It widened. Long story made short, the place where the leg is now, the doctor said they need to cut off the leg. That devil is a bastard. That leg came in here dead and limping. Show us how you were walking when you came. Sure. Yes, the black spot. Still evidence, this black spot. But the, this, this, this vascularized side now shows that he's come back alive. That's right. This, this, this black side is, is the dead part of the leg. Yes. This one now has Sarah. blood supply already middle, yes. as it is coming on this middle also. Yes. And that is showing us that the leg right. is come back to life. And he was dancing with it. How did you walk when you came? When I came here. Could not match that leg on the ground. Hey! Move slow, slow. Move slow. Now show us how you can move. Now move on the altar. I'm not the 
Very short. Take your hand. This man cannot make me lose my respect. <laughs> I respect myself as a tall person. You are. Power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. He wants me to look up to him. leg to cut the leg off everything the devil wants to take from your life or everything that is already taken I prophesy it is restored Amen. give the Lord a praise take your seat a nurse. Who is the mother? This is auntie, his, um, the family friend. He's currently doing NYSC and staying with the family that friend. That is, he did deaf education. He, he went to deaf and dumb school, did deaf education, and now has a degree and is doing NYSC. As the rain started, after your appreciation of God for the roof that we have to worship in a meeting like this, and then God prophetically brought the rain, he turned to his auntie and said he can hear the rain falling. He can hear. Hey! 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 You better stand up and celebrate. Wait, wait. 
in a prophetic climate, anything is possible. First of all, I said, I looked around this place and I said, which kind of stadium can you go that you, you won't be afraid of rain? You won't be afraid of sun. Let us thank God. And then I forgot about it. Then after a while, the rain that I just talked about started falling. Yes. To confirm that if we're in an open field, we'll be, be running, 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 running now. Running up and, down. and then I said, let us thank God again for this rain. Then he told the, the, the auntie, I can hear the rain. He signaled that he can hear the sound. That is, if you are going to thank God for his finger, you see his hand. Yes, 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 yes. If you thank God for the gari you, you are eating, you will see the pounded yam you've been looking for. Ay, 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 Let us celebrate, celebrate three minutes now. If you want to hear the sound of your miracle, the sound of your baby, the sound of your testimony, you want to hear the sound of anything you want to hear, you want to hear the sound of congratulation. I want you to dance now for five, seven minutes. Let's go. I can see him dancing. So let, let's dance it together. Now, not only has God given us, given us a place where we are not afraid of rain or sun, but all over the world, people are connected now. Yes. Millions in America, millions in Britain, millions around the world. Right. Uh -huh.
in your life is opening now. You people wait. God. Look at it. Supernatural what? Manifestations of diverse. Opening. Please write it bolder. The ICT is not bold enough. Write it bolder and place on the screen. The theme of today. So that you can know what to expect. This is one of them. This is one of them. I see two are waiting for you. Hola, hola, hola. Yes. Supernatural manifestations of diverse openings. If you are receiving your own opening right now. If you have the jingle for this service, you can play it. Do you know the meaning of this? Number one, anything the devil has closed against you that is a door is opening right now. Number two, he was born deaf and dumb. Can't hear, can't speak. Anything that you are born with that followed you from your mother's womb that is a negative identity today it is cancelled it is cancelled let us celebrate I am always happy you to know because faith comes by hearing so that you know what to expect today. Say, do it again. ICT video. Nine hours. Audio, sound. Opening for the womb, opening for the eyes, opening for the ears, opening of ministry doors, career doors, destiny doors, business doors, doors on all sides. Hey, 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 
happen to be here. People will travel from outside the country, from the UK, from the US, from everywhere. 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. at the Glory Dome. I said they will give you a financial miracle today. Receive your harvest now. Are you getting ready for your own opening? Celebrate it for two minutes before we, we go to the next level. Half time yet. I prophesy to somebody. <laughs> I prophesy to somebody. Today is that day you have been waiting for. Say that amen like a believer. Whatever was a battle that followed you here, that battle shall be buried by the mantle. on the gallery shout the loudest amen I can see Lagos Church I can see Kaduna Church I can see Uyo Church I prophesy to, to the churches and then others connected the power of God reach you where you are in the name of Jesus give the Lord the praise sit down a miracle here this young lad was born deaf and dumb. This 
boy was brought deaf and dumb. In the course of the meeting, Wait. the ears popped open. He turned to the father and called the father, Papa. This boy was brought deaf and dumb. In the course of the ministration, he turned to the father and said, Papa. That is the language every child speaks without being taught. In, the, in case you don't know, nobody teaches a child to say papa or mama. It came with birth. And it is universal in all languages. I heard of a, mini, a miracle in A.A. Allen's ministry where a child was born deaf, born dumb. Everything was dead in that child, crippled. The moment the child was healed on the spot, a child that has never seen before walked in the direction of who her mother was and said, Mama. He hasn't seen before, so it was a miracle that he knew who the mother was. That is what has happened here now. Deaf and dumb, turn to the father and say, Papa. Baby. Ah. Amen. He turned to him and said, Papa. At some point, the music gets too loud for him, then he holds the ears. When the music gets too loud, he holds his ears. Since they were here. Ah. <laughs> no problem. Face the miracle. Face the miracle. I call you my father, you answer my prayers. 
Fire means something else. If you know the word, a fire, a fire. Let us know. Hallelujah. What happened? Take your seat one minute. Sir, as God is in the business of opening doors, he's also shutting satanic doors. This sister was diagnosed with a perennial fistula that left her with leakage of excrement from that fistula. That had been since 2017. She's been a perianal fistula. fistula. All right, feces, excreta, is coming out from another hole. Another hole. That is, she doesn't need to go to the toilet. The feces will be coming out by itself through another opening around the anus. Another opening. Am I communicating? Look at your neighbor, say you didn't go to school for nothing. No, some people say, why did you say you are, you, you are a doctor and now you say you are a pastor? Why, what was the use of the message? It, it's too useful, self. It's overuseful, self. <laughs> overuseful is worrying it. Overusefulness. <laughs> I'm able to know the implication of sicknesses, the diseases, the extent. I am able to know exactly what God has done, not just that somebody was healed of an ulcer or a cancer. I'm able to know exactly the etiopathogenesis, the pathophysiology. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying here? And then I'm able to know the pharmacology of the drugs, the way the drug acted to, to deafen the ear. I'm knowing that if somebody took chloramphenicol and it became deaf, I'm, I'm aware that it is not just that the, the ear got blocked, but a nerve got dead. And God is resurrecting a nerve. So that is the usefulness of it. Now they say periana fistula. Nobody, for, for somebody it's just a word. But for me, I know that it's a bad thing. That feces is coming out of your body without your control. Would you be smelling up and down? You don't need to go to the toilet. Toilet is going to you. You are, you are not the one going to the toilet. Is toilet going to you? And this woman is, full, is carrying this condition permanently and moving about. Is it pamper you use or what? That devil is a bastard. So go ahead, perianal fistula. Yes, sir. So she said at a shout of glory, she felt the power of God saw through her. She was actually meant to be operated upon last Thursday. But she said she would rather come to the glory dome for this program. Now I asked her to go to the ladies and, and let them confirm that. She is here in company of her sister and her mother. They went there and checked. The orifice had sealed the up. The hole has closed. Had sealed up. You don't understand. That was why the pastor said, God is not just opening doors, but he's also closing things that the closing devil opened. Closing bad doors. She said what? She said, to, as, as the service had progressed till now, by now she should have gone out to remove and change the tissue or whatever she put there. And it stayed dry. So she went and it was dry. So she called the sister, like you said, and they checked. And so they examined and it was closed, totally the closed. The place where they... Toilet and is going was, to her, has closed up. 
It was a great four fistula in Enu. Great four fistula great four. in Enu. That the, is the highest grade. Highest, the highest grade. Level. The, le the uh, level of the orifice was very wide. She says she Tell us. walk mm -hmm. on herself. She cannot. Like egg. That is how I've been working. She carry herself she like eggs. Eggs. She can't walk. She has. She says she has to walk like anything an egg. Because if she try anything, the thing is flowing. You say, but she has been dancing here. Hey. Hole has closed. Are you just sitting and looking hey. like this? Hey. Ay, 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 ay. Perianal fistula. Consultant radiologist did this, and the hole has closed. The meaning of the hole has closed is the shame has closed. The reproach has closed. The smell has closed. Every shame the devil has put in your life, every reproach the devil has put on your body, everything he has put around you, it is closed right now. Mother, that is the mother. Her mother, sister, lying down. Her daughter, Sis mother, sister, daughter. All of them are celebrating. I want all of she you on the been altar. In this man for years. My wait, wait, I wait. Me. The sister is saying something. You said she has been in this man for years. She cannot sit. She's always lying. Down. She cannot sit. She's always always lying, lying down because if she sit, it will be flowing out. My mother has been with her for the past two weeks. Her for mother has been with her for two weeks because they booked her for prayer. My mother in operation. I refuse operation. I said I must come here before anything. That is why I take her yesterday. Mother came from Lukoja yesterday. She said I refuse the weeks, operation. Two weeks. Two I refuse the operation. We must come here first. If something drops, she can't bend to pick it. She will call her children to if pick it. If something drops, she cannot bend to pick it. She has to call the doctor to pick it because it will flow. Come up and excreta flowing like water. Huh? If, if anybody tell you the devil is a good person, is that person a good person? No, no. If anybody no. tell you a devil is a good person, is that person not a devil? What a mighty God we serve. Hey! All the things God has done today. If we stop here, it was enough. Hi. Magana Yakarai. Yakari. Yet we are still on. Anything that is smelling around you. Hey. Today is the end of it forever. Everything that is a cause of shame, a cause of reproach, a cause of disgrace. Today is the end of it forever. Shout the loudest, Amen. Will you dance it for three minutes? an impossibility dance like this do you want <laughs> what are you looking for you dance like this bend your leg if something drops she can't pick it belente dance anything the devil say you cannot do that amen is too paralyzed everything the devil say you cannot do this service today, you have already done it. You shall do it. You shall do it. If you believe the devil say you cannot marry, you are going to get married. He said you cannot have a child, you are going to have a child. He said you can't get a job, you are going to get a job. He said you can't have a home, you are going to have a home. If you believe you are going to do what the devil say you cannot do, dance it for three minutes. Three
fate of this kind of mother. It is mother hen fate. Mother refused. No, no surgery. Reminded me of what my mother did to me one day. I had Whitlow. 1986, there about. I was lying in her living room, in her living room, opening, and then I started stooling in the night frequently, opening the door, going, coming, going, coming. She charged out of the bedroom like a mother hen. I said, what is happening? I said, I'm going to the toilet. I, I'm running stomach. He said, how? With which leg? Devil gave you Whitlow, and devil gave you toilet. With which leg? You if you have leg, you can go to the toilet. You don't have leg, the devil is, is taking you to toilet. Lie down there. Let me see the devil that will take you out again. Ay, 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 ay. The toilet died on the spot. Later on, the Hitler, the Whitlow took, found this level. That is mother hem fit. May God give you people in your life. Mother, father, brother, sister, wife, husband. That will know how to charge against the devil. That will know how to deliver you from satanic agenda. Shout the Lord and say, Amen. Hold your hands together. Baby, stand near mother. Hold your hands together. Oh. And grandmother. That's three generations. You stand here. That is three generations. The mother came from the village two weeks ago to Lokoja to meet the daughter to harass the devil. And the devil was successfully har harassed. Lift your hands together. Father, thank you for this three generation of people. Let the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob fall upon them. And let this be the last time the devil will harass this family. of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus I prophesy upon you you will see your children and see your children's children and see your children's children's children in the name of Jesus give the Lord a shout of praise as you take your seat are we going on hola 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 Sit quickly. Receive a call. Three weeks ago in his office. Wait. Talk gradually so that you can hear. Brother Salisu. Yes, Salifu. Receive received a phone call yes, three, weeks. three weeks ago in his office. Instantly went unconscious. And instantly became unconscious. Yes. He was rushed to the national hospital. For three weeks he had been in this vegetative condition. Wait. He received a phone call three weeks ago and instantly lost his consciousness. Yes, sir. Entered into coma, taken into the National Hospital yes. three weeks ago and has remained in that condition. Yes, sir. He couldn't, yes, sir. Couldn't walk, couldn't move. Yes. His, his family had to sign on that take it this morning to be released for this service. They, they, there is something we call signing against medical advice. <laughs> that is what they did this morning. That is, I want to carry my brother to prayer or carry my brother to an hospital. Doctor says sign. That if anything happened, we don't have any hand. They signed. That's brutal. I'm very rugged. Signed against medical advice. It's the same way that when you are going for theater, somebody signs. And they signed and came here today. Yes. In that vegetative state, they carried him. Yes. He has been lying at the back from the beginning of the service. But at the shout of glory, the power of God surged through his body. He regained solid strength. He has been standing for the past one hour. 
He can walk, strength, He's return. been standing for the past one hour. Yes. Uh, more than two standing. hours now. He's standing. I've never, that has never happened. Since 18 days now. 18 days? Yes, sir. In which condition did you say he came? Yeah. All right, move on. Go up there. No, it's okay, leave him. Walk up. He received a call and went and lost consciousness. Every arrow of sudden death that amen can be. Every arrow of sudden death looking for you, looking for your family, looking for your brothers, looking for your husband, looking for your wife, looking for your children that arrow of sudden death is retrieved and refired back to sender somebody shout back to sender shout it back to sender shout it back to sender say after me say every arrow of destruction arrow of disaster looking for me Wherever you came from, I retrieve you and I refire you back to send us. Open your mouth and pray back to send us. 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 Arrow of death. Premature death, arrow of madness, arrow of destruction. Back to sender, back to sender, back to sender, back to sender, back to sender. Back to sender, back to sender, back to sender, back to sender. Back to sender. arrow of pain, arrow of disease, arrow of destruction, arrow of frustration. Back to sender. Back to sender in Jesus' name. So shall it be. You will not bury your husband before they are fully ripe in age. You will not bury your wife before time. You will not bury your children. Somebody shout the loudest, amen. Shout the loud most, amen. Congratulations. Please take your seat, people. Thank you, Jesus. That's the best thing to say. Back to sender. You'll be healed and be delivered. Can we round off now? What are you say? O kamale aleya, eh? Ole. O kamale aleya. O kamale ya. Kamale ya. O kamale ya. O kamale ya. I wish we can have this kind of time once a month. Well, the night vigil is the second one. This young man, 32 years old, born as a sickler. Yes, sir. Complicated like a, complicated like a 
Complications of sickle cell anemia, he had um, inf infarcts in the, um, I think that was acute right frontal infarct. There was infarct in the brain, yes, from the sickle cell, from the sickling of the, of the sickle cells, had infarct, and then started having seizures. If he was in a place like this, normally with this level of, of sound, he would have had a seizure. This morning he had a fit before coming and they had to gather him together and then he came in. He, it started when he was in the university. That's when they found that was sickle cell for the first time. And as he came this morning, while the service was on, he received strength. His eyes, there were some, some also some complications in the eyes, some infarcts in the retinopathies from um, sickle cell an anemia and he came in he's received strength and they, they brought him out excited because something has happened as a matter of fact we, we had uh, three boys all of them sickle cell three, three boys, cell. All three of boys them yes cell. one of, we lost one of them 2014 one the of them one of them died in 2014 the other two are here one of them is a worker here the brother who is a junior to this one is a worker in the church him here and he is healed the mother said for this one he has been healed no symptoms again for how long he can't remember he's been in the church sickle cell healed no he symptoms all of them three children's boys sicklers one died two are left as sicklers this one came to this church got healed and he can't remember since when he's healed he's standing here as one of the counters congratulations and this is his brother had, he had subacute right frontal infarct. Infarct. That is right frontal. On this side, there is something like the sickle cell probably blocked one of the tiny arteries yes. and then killed some brain cells right in the front here on this side. With scar tissue formation. And with scar the tissue formation. The outcome of that is convulsions, seizures. See the back of his head. See the back of his head. Be falling down out of convulsion. That is sickle cell anemia causing other problems in the boy's body. Before they came this morning, he convulsed. And if it was before, he couldn't sit in this kind of crowd without fitting. He has been here since not once. God has touched the eye, God has touched the body, and they came out excited. And I want to pray for you and prophesy. The God who has healed, made your brother to be free of all symptoms, is making you free now. Satan, I rebuke you, spirit of inheritance. Demon of sickle cell anemia. Spirit of inheritance. Sickle blood cell. Lose your grip of these children. I hate you with a passion, you devil. Go! Oh, oh. no. In the name of Jesus! Sickle cells become normal red blood cells. SS change to AA. I declare you who. If your body suffers pain and your health you can't regain and your hope is almost sinking. In despair, Jesus knows the way you feel. He can ask and he can say, Take your burdens to the Lord, leave it there. If your body suffers pain and your health you can't regain. And your hope is almost sinking in despair. Jesus knows the way you feel. He can help and he can save. Take your burden to the Lord.
will surely bring you up. Take your burdens to the Lord. Baby, die. And by this little of Calvary. 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 Come and sit on my chair. At Calvary, Jesus is there. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. 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 Burdens are lifted. Let him sit there and encounter the power. He won't lose another child. He is whole. Huh? In Jesus' name. Father, bless this mother. This husband. Parents are buried by children when they are old. They don't bury children. So the embargo is over. sit one minute. Please avoid unusual movements. Very soon we'll have a little break. Just little. What happened? Cerebral pass. As at the time he was born, he started convulsing for a period of time and they came with such condition to church today with that cerebral palsy, and all through the time they were in church, she just discovered that the boy could move his head. All the while, he has been bent. No neck control. At this age, most times, the, the cerebral palsy, the neck is just anywhere the neck is, that is where it is. If he goes here, he remains there. If he comes down, he remains there. But now, boy is controlling his head. Neck is on him. See the head. The neck is standing. Uncle, uncle, look at me.
Don't do guy, do what we were doing before. Neck is straight. Head is straight up on the neck. Somebody give the king a, 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 a miracle clap of hand. The rest of it is done. And the brain. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. We have testimonies from locations. You can let us have it. These are divine encounters. All right, can, can we take it in the second segment? Just identify those by name so you can call them out um, in the second segment. Agaba! Le they, are, they are showing us a testimony from Dunamis Leki. Our God is at work in Dunamis Leki, Lagos also. Brother Sunday Opeke. An electrician fell down from a roof while walking a year ago. His right leg got broken. He could not walk without the aid of crutches since then. But at the shout of glory in this service, hey, God's power landed on him. Immediately he dropped the two crutches and began to walk to the glory of God without aid for the first time in one year. Give the Lord a big clap of hand. The miracle is not only happening, at the glory dome is happening all across the country i prophesy in every location everything happening here is happening there and your miracles are permanent now the encounter testimonies you'll call them out later on so that we can rush a little bit we are already behind time we're already behind time and all of you that are here your testimonies are permanent can I hear a louder amen? amen? What happened to you, man? What happened to you? You are healed of sugar level. All of you, your healings are permanent. Let us stand up on our feet, everybody. Celebrate all these testimonies one minute, and then we'll go to the next level. Celebrate it. And all of you who came out to share testimonies, hold on. We may not have the time to take it now, but probably tomorrow evening, the midweek service, Sunday service, and the worship and wonders night of the, of the month, we can take your testimony. In fact, next week, Tuesday, God bless you. Dance your way Alpha, to the back. Everybody, be on your feet and dance. Celebrate. Alpha, Omega, you are worthy of my praises today. You are worthy of my praises. Alpha and Omega.
our Father, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. And we give you the adoration. Thank you, Lord, for this service. Incredible things we have seen. Incredible things you have done. Let nobody live here the same. We again say thank you. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a praise. Take your seat for a minute. Will you lift up your right hand and ask God to say a word to you? In a short while from now, we shall be taking a brief break, so please be patient a bit. Lift your right hand and ask God to speak a word to you that will change your life. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Adoration to your name, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Supernatural openings is the text of our speech quickly this afternoon. Revelation chapter 3 verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write. This thing saith he that is holy. He that is true. He that has the key of David. He that openeth and no man shutteth. And shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. But thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. My Lord has the key of David. He opens and none can shut. He has opened the door for me. And no man can shut the door. My Lord has the key of David. He opens and none can shut. He has opened the door for me, and no man can shut the door. And I have stepped into my season of open It's my open door. It's my year of open door. It's my open door. The Lord have come to my open door. Our objective today is to understand the supernatural way opening power of God. Way opening or door opening. Throughout scripture we see God as a supernatural door opener. A supernatural way opener. He opened the highway in the Red Sea. He opened a way in the River Jordan. 
He stepped into a room after resurrection without passing through a door. John chapter 20 verse 19 and then verse 25. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in their midst. The doors were shut. Verse 25, we saw it again. The, verse 26, the doors were shut. And after eight days, again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. We serve the God who is a supernatural door opener, a supernatural way maker. And there are three facts regarding his ability that you need to know. One, God does not need a regular door to our sex anywhere under heaven. He doesn't need a regular door. He doesn't need a regular door. We just saw that. Revelation chapter 20 verse 19 and verse, sorry, John 20, 19 and then 26. He doesn't need a regular door to access anywhere under heaven. I'm seeing a touch light there. Is that a phone light or what is that? That is, he can pass through any way outside the normal way. That is why he is the protocol suspender. That is you are seated here. In case there is a way that is closed against you, God has another way. That amen is too paralyzed. I said in case there is a door, a way, an access that they have closed against you, God will pass you through another road. God will pass you through another way. God will create for you another way. Shout amen like a believer. That is, he doesn't need a regular door to access anywhere under heaven. Number two, he can, God can create a way where there was none. That is, apart from having the road he can pass, he can create one. In Genesis, in Exodus chapter 14 verse 21 he made a highway in the Red Sea as Moses stretched out his hand over the sea he can create a way he can create a road where there is none because the way does not need a way I am the way the truth and the life I can't be the way and be looking for ways. Anyone seated here today that is in need of a way created for you, maybe in, the, in your business area, in your ministry area, in your career area, they have blocked the other roads. Your God and my God will create a way he will create a way. He will create a way supernaturally. Shout the loudest. Amen. Thirdly, all doors bow to the authority of God. That is, apart from not needing the door, 
apart from being able to create a way, all doors bow to his authority. By, the, by what we call the key of David in Revelation chapter 3 verse 7. He has a, the key of David that opens and no man shuts, and shuts and no man opens. What I, what the, the meaning of that is that the master has the master key. If the door does not open for him of his own accord, he opens it by his master key. And God is about to open the door for you. You know these electronic doors, like the one here, when you approach it, it bows. If human beings can do such a thing, how much more Jehovah? Remember the story of the herbalist that somebody took to native doctor, he took to, I think Hilton, to go and do charm for him or something. And as the man was approaching the Hilton door, it opened. He went back. He came close again, the door opened. He went back. He came close again, the door opened. He told his client, he said, somebody is trying my power here. Let me go and recharge and come back. He couldn't understand the door. He said, somebody, he was too local to understand the door. He said, somebody is trying his power here. Let him go and charge and come. That is the primitivity of a occultism, occultic person. But we serve a God that is aware that the door must open. <laughs> and the door must open. Very soon the meaning is you will not need to knock. That amen is too paralyzed. Say a believer's amen. Look at somebody near you say where you have been knocking. Very, very soon, the door will open for you without you knocking at all. Shout the loudest, amen. Are you okay on this side? I saw the light went off. Just like you to rush and let's get it done. Light up. What are the secrets? Of supernatural openings. Number one, the power of God through prophetic impact. Doors can open supernaturally for you through the power of God that is deployed by your prophet. The children of Israel stood in front of the Jordan River. Sorry, both the Jordan River and the Red Sea. And in Exodus chapter 14 verse 15 and verse 16, the Lord said unto Moses, Why are you crying to me like this? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. And then you lift up your rod and stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Verse 21. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strongest wind all that night. And made the sea dry land. And the waters went too fast. And the waters were divided. Full stop. The children went in the midst of the river. The waters were divided. A road was created by the power of God in the hand of their prophet. At the river Jordan, there was also another obstacle. God still used the ministry of the priest. Joshua chapter 3 verse 15 and 16. He said, let the priest go as their feet deep in the, in the, at the brink of Jordan. The Jordan shall be divided. Your prophet, your priest, is critical for your open doors in life. When young 
man told me, he said, he came the first vision we had here. The first night vision we had here. He came here. I think he was jobless at that time. Everything almost grounded. Trusting God for the way forward. He said he left here. And he went and slept. After the video, the first one we had here. And then he got some ideas and got some light and insight and so on. And then started an endeavor with a five-day fast. Today he's in comfortable millions. With people working for him in millions. It's one thing to be a millionaire. It's another thing to have millionaires under you. One of the people working under him said, himself, that one working under him, told me with his mouth, that one also is a, medic, is a, is a, 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 a worker in this church. He's a, a, a member of this church. Medical doctor living in a house that was leaking. That one too said, out of this altar, God changed his life. He's working under this other man that got ideas to start something from, from the first vigil here. The one walking under him said he is the richest person in his village. Hello? And he said it in presence of the man. Both of them lighted by the rod of the prophet. The way was created for them where the devil wanted them dead. I am still here with that same oil. And the God who caused that to happen is still here. And I announce today, by this prophetic rod, every red sea before you is now divided. Say them and say it like a believer. You are saying them and say it like a believer. Believe the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe also his prophet, so shall you prosper. As you believe in this declaration today, whether it is the door of business, the door of the womb, the door of marriage, the door of your career, the door of destiny, it is opening now. Shout the loudest amen. Take your seat. You are not permitted to be stranded with a prophetic cover. What did I say? Elisha stood in front of the river Jordan. Elijah, his master, has passed. They passed together. He went to heaven. He, Elisha was returning. And now the river Jordan was in front of him. What did he say? Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Bam! Where is the mantle of my father? How can I be stranded here? How can I be stagnated here? And the river turned hither and thither. Today by the mantle with which I minister, every Jordan River, every Red Sea in front of you is dividing right now. And I speak the same to all our people who are connected. All our people from Makodi, from Kaduna, from Uyo, from Lekki, from Lagos that I saw. And for every other location, every Jordan River in front of you, today is their end. <laughs> the last nine hours in his presence with did at Area 1, July last year, people are testifying about it today. This to today, by this time next year, your testimony is still running. <laughs> that amen is too paralyzed. What is happening here today? What shall happen to you today? What will be happening to you today? By this time next month, two months time, three months time, one year time, two years, you will trace your testimony to this encounter. 
you will trace your testimony to this service. You believe that shout, I believe five times. Again, 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 again. Give the Lord a praise, take your seat. The power of God through the prophet, through prophetic impact. Number two key is the sound of praise and worship. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. A shout of victory. A shout of worship. Joshua chapter 6 verse 20. The people shouted the wall collapsed. The wall collapsed. Means the road, the way was made for them. The people shouted and the wall collapsed. Is there somebody shouting for the wall standing between you and your inheritance to collapse? For the wall standing between you and your inheritance to collapse? Is there anybody shouting? So you can shift level to your next level, to your next level, to the other side, the other side, the other side, the other side. In the name of Jesus. Take your seat. And Paul and Silas prayed. Comma means pause. Means nothing yet. But when they added praises and sang praise unto God and the prisoners heard them, suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed hear this praise does not only open your door it dismantles satanic constructions it demolishes demonic installations the praise broke down the wall. He also broke the prison foundation. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't just open the door. Your praise, your worship attacks the root of your problems. It attacks the foundations of your challenge. Ay, 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 ay. Anybody hearing something at all? It attacks the foundation that is carrying your captivity. It visits the occultic altars that won't let you rest. And by the time he finishes with them, he opens your doors. This morning I prophesy. It's, it is afternoon, but I say morning. Because anytime your joy comes, that is morning. Joy comment in the morning. We be may endure for a night, but joy come. Any time at all, joy comes. That is morning. Look at the number, say good morning. Ask him, why are you telling me good morning in the afternoon? Say, because my joy has come. demonic occultic foundation witchcraft foundation that is preventing your door from opening today they shall collapse that foundation scatters by fire that foundation scatters by fire somebody give the Lord a 60 second shout of victory. 60 seconds. One, two, shout!
Joy cometh in the morning. In Jesus' precious name. I say again, by this time next year, testimonies that you can trace to today will continue to flow. They will continue to flow. They will continue to flow. Shout power. Give the Lord a praise. Take your seat. supernatural opening number three is the key of insight the key of insight the key of revelation the key of revelational knowledge put it like that of revelation knowledge knowledge is a key Luke eleven fifty two, Jesus said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You have blocked people from getting revelation. Revelation is a key. That was why when Peter identified Jesus in Matthew chapter 16, verse 16 to 7, 19, he said, And Simon answered, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father in heaven. And I say unto you that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on it, anything you open on it is open. And anything you close on it is closed. Revelation knowledge is key. That was why when the word came to Joseph, the prison door opened. In Psalm 105, verse 17, he sent a man before them. Even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters, he was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him, and the king sent and loosed him. When the word came, when the revelation came, the door opened. Within this season, a scriptural light that will shift you to the next level will be given to you. He yeah. said, flesh and blood has not revealed to you, but my father. So our father in heaven can give you light. He can give you relevant passage. You are dreaming in the night and they gave you a paper with a scripture written on it. You woke up in the morning, you opened that scripture. It changed your life. Am I communicating? I've been giving many scriptures, not while sleeping, while awake. Go here, and I went there, and I read it, and what I saw revolutionized my life. I speak to somebody here today. That scripture, that light, that revelation that will change your life and change your level is coming to you right now. The key of revelation, of revelation, knowledge. Number four is the key of sacrifice. Causes door to open, doors to open. The key of sacrifice. Hannah's womb opened when she made the sacrificial vow. First Samuel chapter one verse eleven. If you will remember me and not for, forget your handmaid and you will give me a man child, I will give him to you all the days of his life. That sacrificial vow opened 
her womb. Do you remember the testimony of the woman who said she was trusting God for four years? And she said she has heard testimonies of people trusting God for eight years. And she tells God, what is four years? She goes to a real one altar, lays down there, and offers her sacrifices according to what she said. And then she saw the Jacob kind of encounter, angels, from that altar. And then next time she saw me and mommy and said, I handed over her child or something. Yoke broken. Barrenness terminated. That was what Hannah did. That her own was a sacrificial vow. The Shunammite woman. He sacrificially built a house for the prophet. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 9. All the way, I perceive that this man is a holy man of God. He passes by us continually. Let us build a house for him. After that was done, the, the man said, what can be done for this woman? Long story made short, according to the time of life, you will have a child. Womb by the power of sacrifice. Solomon opened, offered the sacrifice. That's example number three. First Kings chapter three, verse four. He offered a, a, a burnt offering. In Gibeon, a thousand bond offering, verse 5, and the windows of heaven opened. God appeared, he opened heavens. God appeared and said, what do you want? That is, anything you want is possible by sacrifice. The centurion was giving and giving and giving arms in Acts chapter 10, from verse 1 all the way to verse 4. And the Lord sent someone to him and said, all your arms have been received. And the Holy Ghost came on him. The door of the gospel was opened to the Gentile world by the sacrifice of one person. When God lays upon you sacrifice, go ahead and get it done. Because your sacrifice is key to your satisfaction. Even after this season of nine hours sacrificial worship in his presence, you can go ahead and lay down physical sacrifice. Tying it to a day like this. Say, Lord, shift me. Open this door. Nobody will tell you what it is. You tell yourself and let God reveal to you. That is number four, the key of sacrifice. Number five is the key of kindness. Let me call it love and kindness. Loving people, being kind to people can open the, for you the door you are looking for. That was what happened. Hmm. Name and the Syrian. It also happened to David. Let me start with David. David had a challenge where the Amalekites came and confronted him and his family. Took wives, took children, took everybody. David wept until there was no strength to weep. And God told him, pursue, overtake, recover all. While he was pursuing, he saw a man that was abandoned by his master, left to die by a wicked master. David revived him. First Samuel chapter 30 from verse 12. From verse 11 actually. Gave the man water. His spirit came to him. He had not eaten. He hadn't drank anything for three days. And after he revived the man, David asked him, Who are you? Long story made short, he was the one David was looking for. He led David to the recovery of everything. The recovery of everything. By showing a dying man kindness the door was open that he was looking for. Many times, when you ignore people, you ignore your future. Many times, the person you are taking for granted is the reason why you are grounded. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? If David bypassed the man, we are, hurry, want to go and 
recover. Let these people not go fast. In fact, let them not kill all our people before we reach there. He would have missed. But the man took him right to where the people were. Am I communicating? I like us to begin to love people more because it will change your life. The person you may be kind to may not be the person that will give you the direct result. But life is a seed. Whatever a man sows, he shall reap. I know I can never be stranded forever. And my generation cannot be stranded. Because I have made up my mind to relieve people being stranded people. Look at Naaman the Syrian. If you read the passage, you may not understand the passage. In 2 Kings chapter 5, Naaman was a leper. From verse 1, through his hand, Naaman, captain of the host, king of Syria, of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master. He was honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Everything was okay, but there was a comma in his life. Maybe you are like that here. God will change your story today. Verse 2. But it was, and the Syrians had gone out by companies and they brought away captive. That is, they took a slave out of the land of Israel, a little girl. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her, Madam, I wish that Oga was with a prophet of God that is in Samaria. He would have healed him of his leprosy. Can I ask you a question? This girl, do you think she can give such a prescription to a wicked madam? No. Just read between the lines. They must have been so good to her. Maybe taking them like taking her like their daughter. By the way they treated this girl, she was touched for the reproach of her master. Not the house girls that people are almost killing. I am looking forward to situations where somebody will have a house girl and you won't know the difference between the house girl and the child of the house the way they appear. But most times it is very clear. Who is child and who is house girl? Very, very glaring. But this girl, it looks to me like they so much, they so a slave. But there must have been a way they treated her. And this girl said, these people are too good to me. This of my young guy shouldn't be a, a, a reproach like this. There is somebody in my country that can heal him. Madam, please, let your guy be, he, 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 he's a, such a good man. He shouldn't remain like this. And they listen to the advice of the little girl. And your was healed. And I ask you a question. Do you think that that house girl will remain house girl forever. Do you think that after our God come back, he will pick that girl and go and look for the father? We came to your country and we took somebody as a slave. I am sure it's for the sake of my healing that we took this girl. Please, I want to reconnect her with her family. That is how life is. What a man sows is he reaps. It was in the same way that the centurion was literally weeping for his servant in Luke chapter 7. A centurion servant slave who was dear to him was sick. The Bible says he was ready to die. And the man went to beg Jesus Christ. I asked the question before, do you think that that servant was a useless servant? A liability staff? Oh, say no. 
Okay. The Bible said the man was ready to die, but his organ was not ready for him to die. Sick, ready to die. But organ said, I am, you are ready, I'm not ready. You want to die, I will force you to live. I need you. You are an asset. And to show the whole thing, he said, Jesus said, let me come. He said, don't even bother coming. I understand your schedule. Just say one word. Hallelujah. Kindness. David showed it. He opened the door of recovery. Naaman and his family must have showed it to the little girl. He opened the door for his healing. Who are the people in your life that can confirm your kindness? Mommy brought a girl to me the other day by our car. She was greeting me. She said, do you know this girl? I said, no. Works with, I think, Stalin Bank, right? Access Bank. Do you know this girl? I said, no. Oh, he's one of the people you sponsored through university in Bremen State University. You are the one who paid her school fees. From beginning to end. I don't know how. <laughs> how many days on Sunday, right? Three days ago. You are the one who paid her school fees through the university. I don't know her. I don't know her father. If I see her on the road again, I won't know her today. Eh? Father is dead. Plus, two of them. Two of them. Send them to school. One read engineering, she read English. She read engineering. Do you understand what I'm saying? Another one came to me in the, in the office at the one. He said, you are the one who paid my school fees. I said, eh, yeah. he says, went, went to university. She's now working in another bank. I think Sterling Bank or so. I said, oh, congratulations, God bless you. She brought first fruit. And then brought bank form for business. I said, can, can you... Can you open that account with us? <laughs> Somebody say amen. They came to us one time, they said an, orphan, an orphanage in Abuja here was about to be demolished. The orphans don't have where to go. I said, such a thing can't happen while we're alive. We bought, literally bought a house for them. Ew. Bought a full house for them. Then we went to dedicate, the children ran and said, daddy, 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 mommy, mommy. Our picture was, is there. We said, they lay hand and pray every day for you. Children, any witch looking for me should hear that too. Children, fatherless children, every day. Father bless his father. Summary. Don't revolve your life around yourself. Just stretch beyond yourself. There are doors that will open. And for those of us who have done several things for people, I prophesy in this season the door shall open. That amen can be better. In this season, your door shall open. Shout the loudest, amen. Look at somebody by yourself, say your doors are opening. Take your seat. Is God speaking to somebody here? You are about to hear some things today that will change your life. Somebody say, I shall hear it. Number six is the key of kingdom service. I have found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him. Psalm 89 verse 20 I have found since he's my servant I opened the, it opened the door of the oil. Kingdom service. Chapter 1, verse 5. There was a man whose name was Zechariah. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, 
in certain priests named Zacharias, Zacharias of the course of Abia. Abia State. Which part of your Abia is it to see Alangwa? And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless, and they had no child. Don't let anybody tell you it's because of your sins that is the reason why God has not heard you. Sometimes it is just demonic confrontation. These people, they said they were blameless, both of them. They were blameless. That is, even the devil can't find their blame. But they had no child. But that did not stop Zechariah from working for God. Verse 8. He executed his priest's office before God in the order of his course. And then the angel of the Lord appeared to him. The whole multitude were out and there appeared to him the angel of the Lord on the right side of the altar of incense and the angel said to him now when he, he was troubled and said to him fear not Zechariah verse 13 go on but the angel said to him fear not Zechariah for your prayer is said and your wife's womb is opened and he shall bear forth and bring forth a child at the place of service the womb opened this was not the first time he was serving. He had been serving. But when God found his service consistent, he said, let me visit you now. Many people, it is when God wanted to visit them that they didn't come to church. That was when they got tired. I have been a faithful usher. I have been faithfully going on evangelism. I have been faithfully doing and um, counseling work. Let me relax today. And God said, uh -uh, I'm about to visit you. The career has been serving. Supposing on this particular day, he decided not to come. The angel would have come and then gone back to heaven. And say, sir, I went to the place where you said I will meet the man. But I didn't see him there. Heaven knows your location per time. The angel did not miss road. He found him where he was meant to be. There is a place where God expects you to be per time. Especially in his service. Be there. Be there. Your miracle, your testimony, the sign and the wonder will meet you where God expects to see you. The open door will meet you where God expects to see you. Are you saying amen? Say it louder, amen. amen. Sister, you can say that amen in your sleep. No, she's very sleepy. She can all I want is let her say the amen from the sleep. Hallelujah. It is one thing to be where you are meant to be. It's another thing to be awake there. Did you hear what I said? She is where she is meant to be but not awake. And the word that is meant for you can come when you are dozing. That word can come when somebody near you was whispering something to your ear. That word can come when somebody around you is distracting you. That word can come when you are checking your phone in church. Somebody say amen. amen. If you are here in person and not just here by theory, shout the loudest amen. amen. Lift your right hand and say after me, say in the name of Jesus. Today is my day. My miracle. My testimony. 
must meet me today. Say it loud. I say today is my day. My miracle. My testimony must meet me today. Have you received all the keys? When you live here, increase your service. I have been serving. 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 I had a toenail affliction uh, situation some time ago. Maybe 20 years ago. And I will come to speak with a pain on that toenail. The toenail, as if it will remove it, didn't remove. But I ignored it and continued serving. I didn't know when it went. Fantastic. I mean, the God who is drying up cancer cannot kill you, little fungi. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just face your service. Don't let nothing take you out. I give you key number seven. It is called the key of human hatred. That is people hate you. It is a door opener. Is what some of us have been enjoying. The more they hate on us, the more doors open. What was it that made you to think that God looked for David in the wilderness and abandoned everybody in his family? The man was a little ranger at home. David's situation was terrible. Bring all your children, the, prof, the priest said. I have a sacrifice to make and there is an anointing service. Bring all your children. They brought everybody and left David. And God was watching. His father could not speak for him. Mother, mothers that yearn for their children couldn't speak to him. No relation, no brother, no sibling that could say, Sir, Dave is not around. Nobody. Only David know what he, knew what he passed through in that family when he said, When my mother and my father forsake me. Psalm 27 verse 10. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord, I want you to watch out the word then. There are things God can't do with you until people forsake you. My father and my mother forsake me. He didn't say the Lord will take me up. He said then, then. Not before that time. If you are in the good books of everybody and you are such a person that is addicted to human approval, and you do everything possible to ensure that everybody is happy with you. 
You can't go far with God. When we grew up, people, there were people who never gave us the opportunity to become anything. They have no basis for expectation. There are things I will say in time to come. What they call rejection, we have faced it. Face massive rejection. And the worst form of rejection is the rejection that comes from within the home. Where nobody gave you the basis of amounting to anything. Where people concluded on how you will end before you started. They didn't give you the benefit of the doubt. Then. Then. And then doors begin to open. The more hatred begins to rise, the more doors, the more hatred, the more doors. Hate on, hate on, hate on. Keep on hating, keep on hating, keep on hating. And I will keep on having, I'll keep on having, I will keep on. Look at your neighbor, say then. Not before then. Then. Look at your neighbor. Say, if you need God to pick you up, if you need God to do some things in your life, then be ready for some forsakings and forsookings. Everybody stand up on your feet. I'm sure that this message is the reason why somebody is here. All those who don't want you to rest in the office, the kind of door God will open for you. Some of them, if they are not careful, they will have hypertension and stroke. Stand up where you are. Those who think, say, what do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Where do you think you are going? And they are just hating you and hating you and gossiping and conspiring and, 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 and just ganging up. I am here to announce to you that very, very soon they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. About 33 years ago, around the year of 1986, somebody looked at, looked at me. He said, this one went and carried Bible, Bible, Bible. He's talking about me. What has, he be, what is, what has the Bible given you now? What are you asking me 33 years ago what the Bible has given me? I was not even 20 years yet. I haven't started was 17 years no 18 years are you asking me what has the bible given me bible 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 1986 he's angry that i carry bible that person today our difference is not like heaven and hell heaven and earth have taken money, assisted him from my pocket. The same person to assist his life. Wretched, miserable life. From the same Bible that I carried. The same Bible that I carried. That he asking me, what has the Bible given me now? The young man, young boy. He was a graduate. He had um, was already living life. 
and he thought everything was everything was okay. Please be careful how you talk to people. You don't know what they will become. Potiphar's wife, be careful how you talk to Joseph. He won't be your houseboy forever. When I go to heaven, I will, I will try to find out from Joseph. Where was Potiphar's wife and Potiphar sitting during his swearing in ceremony? I said, human hatred. Human hatred. Some people are asking. <laughs> Some people, when I mention point number seven, human hatred, say, eh? is that a key? It's a major key, Seth. There are things God does in people's life to show both the devil and his people that the opinion of man can never be equal to the verdict of God. To let people know that I am the one who created that man. You cannot determine his life for me. I am the one who made that girl, that, loop, that lady. You cannot determine what she will become for me. After this session, we'll go on a little 30 minutes break. Stretch your leg. And then we'll be back to do some dangerous deliverance. To deal very mercilessly with satanic altars and satanic calculation and orchestration and things that people have said against you and the things that want to render you and your children poor and wretched. Do you know my counsel for you? When they hate you, don't hate them back. If you hate them back, you have done what God, you have decided to take the place of God to fight for yourself so God will step aside. When they hate you and you try to hate them back, plus one minus one has become equal to zero. No result. Both you and them will remain at the normal carnal human level. And then their expectations will come to pass. What they expect of you will happen. Since you are trying to fight a spiritual war with physical weapons. If they hate you, don't hate them back. And there are people who want to let you know that they hate you. There are those who, who, who do it quietly. But there are those who want you to know. one of the worst things you can do for them is to behave as if you are not aware. It heaps coals of fire on their head. It makes them look like a fool. All the things I am doing to get your attention, you just make them know you are not worth any attention at all. Jacob had two wives. Not by choice, but by lack of mentality. I say lack of mentality because, first of all, he saw Rachel and started crying. Is that how to marry? And then he met his father-in-law. Remain standing, you know. Join me, stand. I want you to be attentive because... Since I saw that woman who was sleeping in the afternoon inside this heated preaching, I changed my mind. And then, instead of waiting for his father-in-law to tell him the dowry, he prescribed dowry for himself. I will labor for seven years for this girl. The man said, you don't know who you are dealing with. You met a cunning man. Start the labor. 
When he labored for seven years, the man packaged another woman. He packaged Leah, the firstborn, packaged her and handed her over to Jacob. And Jacob behaved in a way that is not a positive quality for masculinity. That a man was with his wife from night till morning and didn't know it was another woman. Only in the morning he discovered that this is not the ritual he wanted. That was the beginning of the problem of Rachel. Hated by Jacob. Hated, sorry, Leah. And then the father said, work for another seven years if you want Rachel. He labored for another seven years and Rachel came. Which means for all that duration, Leah was barren. Rachel was barren. Both of them were barren. And do, do you know what it means to walk in a house where your husband hates you and then your junior sister is married to the same husband, hates you with a passion? Only one thing saved Leah. Genesis 29, verse 31. Everybody read it. Only one thing saved Leah. Everybody want to go. Two of them are barren. God was watching. I'm looking for a key to use to open this womb. And he found when the Lord saw, not before he saw, there are doors that will never open until God has seen how you have been treated. When the Lord saw, he opened the womb. Beloved, it is not all the time you have to pray that people shouldn't hate you. Otherwise, you are praying against open doors. <laughs> it's very difficult to... It's like if you are asking for God's favor then you are asking for envy. If you don't want people to hate you, don't ask God to favor you. And then if God has favored you, they will hate you. And if they hate you, it will open doors. And if you don't want open doors, avoid hatred. Just be, please everybody. Do anything everybody wants, just do it for them. Because I don't want anybody to hate me then you are saying, I don't want any door to open. But I can tell you, massive doors open for some of us. Massive doors! This place we are in provoked more hatred from all quarters. Opening further massive doors. Who is the person I'm about to congratulate? They've been hating you. They've been hating you. They, they've been, they've been jealous in you. They've been jealous in you. They've been jealous in you. They've been envying you. They've been hating you. Even in your family, your friends, your friends, people that are meant to be your friends are in competition with you. People you trust have turned against you. Congratulations. Father, that door that only hatred can open, open it for that woman. Open it for that man. Open it for that girl. Open it for that boy. Open it for that person. You are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. Say amen. 
At times you are passing, people are talking about you. And you know it is about you, they are talking. Just be moving. How are you all? How are you? Are you all okay? See you later, yeah? If they say, see his walking step, he can't even walk for first. first. But if you mind people, you lose your place. You lose your destiny. Exercise your conscience to be void of offense towards God and man. Ensure that you do your best to please God. Ensure you do your best to keep your conscience straight. But when they hate you, don't hate them back. That will prevent God from doing what he should do. Pray for them. Ask God to reward them according to their labor. Paul the Apostle prayed for Alexander the coppersmith. He said, he did me much evil. The Lord reward him. That's not a bad prayer. Father, I commit that person in your hand. It's your child. I've done no wrong. I ask that you help that person to see light and not to die and end in hell. But above all, reward them according to their labor. Because there are things that people need to, that God used to do for people before they learn lesson. He said, when thy judgments are in the earth, Psalm, Isaiah 26 verse 9, then the inhabitants of the earth will learn righteousness. With my soul have I desired you in the night. Yeah, with my spirit within me will I seek you early. When your judgments are in the earth, that is when you give people reward according to what they deserve, then they learn how to do right. There are things that so a witch now, is it a God giving him financial breakthrough that will change the person? No. It's give him the reward of what he costs others. He costs others stroke, he receives stroke. He give another person stroke, he receives a second stroke. He give another person cancer, he receives the cancer. Then on his deathbed, he can confess and God will answer your first prayer that he should not go to hell and confess and go to heaven. But he receives his reward. Even Paul, Paul, Paul the Apostle, when Jesus Christ encountered him on the road, he said, I will show you light, how you will turn the Gentiles to light, and I will teach you the things you will suffer for my sake. He seemed to be saying, since you suffered others, you remember how you suffer, Stephen? You too will suffer. You know, who was gathering people's cloth that were stoning Stephen? Paul. When they stoned Stephen, stoned Stephen, stoned him to death, he gathered the cloth, he was there. Stone him well. Stone him well. In Acts of their Apostle chapter 14, he himself was stoned dead. God said, because of how Stephen felt, I'd like you to feel how he felt. You to experience stoning. Paul is born again, oh. Paul is rich, you know. But he received reward. Belente witch. How much less? How much, how much less occultic man? He must, he must, he must, so, he must experience more. What he passed out as true. Achi kwakwa. Kwakus. It's already to four and we have not started. 
We are meant to finish by six. What shall we do now? All right, lift up your hands and give the Lord the praise. <coughs> I will just take the next 10 minutes after which we'll take a slight break. Lift your hands and say, Father. Say it louder. Say, Father. I come before you today to thank you for your goodness and your mercies. Father, thank you because you are God. You are faithful. El Shaddai. El Lion. Elohim. I am grateful. Oh God, of the open door, open my doors, open my way today in the name of Jesus. Open my door, open my way. I come before you today. Lift your hands, say, Father, I make demands on the door that the hatred can open. Father, help me with the key of kingdom service. Help me with the key of love and kindness. Help me with the key of sacrifice. Help me with the key of revelation knowledge. Help me with the key of praise and worship. Help me, Lord. With prophetic impact from your servant. But today, let my door open. Let it open, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray right now. Pray, pray, pray. Nobody going out now, please. Just give me five minutes. Pray. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. He's always just the same. A praise his holy name. That is the reason why I love him so. Jesus is the sweetest name I know sweet Jesus sweet Jesus how wonderful you are you are fairer than a morning star you are fairer much fairer than the lily that grows by the way you are precious my precious then go in the name of Jesus Christ lift up your hands I will take this matter blow by blow when we return back lift your hands high everywhere you are this evening you are saying to me pastor I want my sins forgiven I want Jesus to be Lord over my life. I want today to mark a turning point. Help me, Lord. Help me. You see, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come in. Before you can open your door for you, you must open your heart to him. Today we have seen miracles, signs, wonders. And we are here to receive more from various locations. You are here in this assembly this morning. Anywhere you are on every level of the gallery. You want Jesus to be Lord over your life. You want to open the door of your heart to him. I'd like you to pick your Bibles and pick your bags. And quickly come forward. You will return back to your seat shortly, but quickly come forward. I'll give you the count of seven. And don't be the last to come out. Pastor. I want to make it right with Jesus. No, nobody going out. This time is not to go out. It's coming forward. 
If you are not coming forward, remain on your seat until we are through in the next few minutes. Keep coming. The rest of us, take your seat one minute. Keep coming. I'll give you the count of seven. One. Two. Why is the road choked? Why is that road choked there? Give them space to come. Four. Don't be the last to come. As you come, come with your Bibles and your bags. Just a minute. You will still return back to that seat. Those of you where they have left their seat, please don't let another person occupy it. They return back there. But quickly come forward. Five. Six. You have seen miracles. You have seen signs and wonders. In all our locations around the world. Anywhere you are connected. Quickly. Be on the altar of that church there. And come forward. Quickly, quickly, quickly. And go. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, how wonderful you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, much fairer than the lily that grows. tobacco, Indian hemp, anything like that, pornography, bad movies, masturbation, anything that is a chain in your life, you want that yoke broken, you stand up on your feet quickly, carry your Bibles, carry your bags, and stand up on your feet quickly, and say, I am tired of this addiction, I don't want to smoke anymore, I don't want to drink anymore, I don't want to womanize anymore, quickly rush forward here, I'll give you another count of seven, or you backslid and you want to return back to God. One. Lord, I give you my heart. Two. I give you my soul. Three. For you, Jesus. I give you my Four. Every breath that I Every moment I'm away. Every moment I'm away. Five. I have your will. I have Six. Oh, Everybody sing. right hand on your chest and say after me this prayer say Lord Jesus I come before you today to hand over my life to you today Jesus I have decided to follow you no turning back from today I go forward ever backward never the grace to live for you, I receive that grace. Help me, Lord, to live for you. Help me, Lord, to do your will. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for you today. I declare today a new season for you. I declare the hold of sin broken off your life. The grace to live for God, I declare it is released upon you help from above that is your portion I call it done in Jesus name all of you here I'd like you to remain here 
our officers are going to speak with you briefly. They'll give you a form to fill. I'm going to use that form to send you a text message as I look forward to seeing you without fail this coming Sunday, which is an impartation service for everybody's notice. Anything you want God to impact for you. Maybe you are trusting God for children, you bring children club. You have certificate not working, you bring it as a point of contact. You have whatever is your point of contact you want the blessing of God on this coming Sunday. We shall be having that impartation service. And your God and my God will change your story. At the end of the service on Sunday, I will be seeing you and agree with you one more time in a word of prayer. And our counselors will do that. God bless you. People, we have about two hours, 15 minutes more out of nine hours. And it doesn't appear like we are halfway yet. I can actually read out my schedule for today for you. But we will carry, carry it over. Don't be afraid. We will um, we'll respect the time. We will respect the time. Only caution I want to give you is please don't leave before just, you have done six hours, 45 minutes, almost seven hours. You have only two hours left. I perceive that some people want to go out, out, out of the break. Don't do so. It's injustice to yourself. Better is the end of the thing than the beginning. Secondly, the segment of dealing brutally with causes. When we come back, we're going to be writing down family patterns and altars that we we'll trust God to destroy with these nine hours. Anybody believe something is about to happen, say amen. And that shall be done. We will take 30 minutes. If you don't have any reason to stand, no reason, you just come down and just be in prayers. If you have, brisk, briskly, come out. I don't encourage anybody to cross the gate. I don't know how we're going to do that. But, eh? And the time is too short for you to go and go outside of the gate. You want, you didn't bring, I told you to bring water. Eh? I, I think there will be water around. I think there will be water around without necessarily crossing the gate. Am I communicating? But if you are to fast for three days, is it a challenge? If it will end your problem. You will over fast, sir. Can even do seven days, sir. So, anything you want after six, you can take it outside. But for this time, just do your best. Lift up your... Now, within that 30 minutes, I also see it as a personal encounter time. If you want to quickly do 10 minutes and come out, and you don't want to go at all, just stay put. But something is going to happen to you. Lift up your right hand and say, Father, today is my day for a change of story. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. 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 Jesus precious name. Anybody blessed so far? All right, take your seat. Stretch your two hands in front of you. We we'll almost forget offering today if, we are, if I have not just been reminded. Stretch your two hands today and I pray upon your hands. The season of scarcity is over forever. The God of open doors who is also the God of financial open doors opens your doors now. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Quickly pick up your offerings. Do that and then go out. Just pick it up. Let's honor God. Anybody watching online, say amen. They are saying it. Online viewers, Facebook viewers, YouTube, WeTube, UsTube. Instant gram. Gradual gram. Say amen. 
in all our locations across the country. Hello. To Onisha, to Makodi, to Lagos, to Lekki, to Kaduna, to Uyo. Can, we, can you wave your hands to them and say congratulations for your testimonies? Hallelujah. Pick up those offerings. And lift it high up. Father, multiply the harvest of every meal. Let the hands lifted never drop to bed. In Jesus' name. Celebratiously drop that offering quickly. Celebrate. Online giving details are online. You click the give online. And the link will direct you to how to give. The email, the text message, the WhatsApp will also link you on how to give. Let's go. The Lord had the key of David. He opened and no one can shut. He has opened a door for me. No man can shut the door. The Lord had the key of David. He opened. No confusion. Let the ushers finish their assignment before those moving can move. Please give the ushers time to finish. He opens and none can shut. He has opened the door for me. stepping out don't carelessly leave phone or materials on the seat except the person sitting by you is someone who is watching it for you Judas is Kairot goes to church so be, be, be one don't carelessly leave seat I mean phone or things on your seat except the person sitting by you is watching it for you or you ask them to watch it for you and if anybody comes to a place like this and attempts to steal anything please you are back at the most 30 minutes. This is 3.50. By 4.20 at the most, you should be back in. 